It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Alex has the day off. Andy and Renee are here as we started the show. Sad news. A farewell to the iPod. We'll look back at 20 years of great music. That and a whole lot more coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 817, recorded Tuesday, May 10th, 2022. You can't touch this. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by Blue Land. Stop wasting water and throwing out more plastic. Get Blue Land's revolutionary refill cleaning system instead. Right now, you can get 20% off your first order when you go to blueland.com slash MacBreak. And by Ultimate Ears Fits. Ultimate Ears Fits are the world's most comfortable earbuds with premium sound and all-day comfort. Use promo code MACBREAK at ue.com slash fits to get your pair. And by the new and recently updated TriCaster 2 Elite by NewTek, the most complete live production system on the planet. There's a TriCaster for every production, including yours. Visit go.newtech.com slash twit-tv where an interactive guide will advise you on which TriCaster is right for you. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Apple. Alex Lindsay has the day off. Renee Ritchie is here. YouTube.com slash Renee Ritchie. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you, Leo. I'm, I'm clutching all my Apple gear just to make sure nothing gets canceled during the show. I'm keeping it all very close to me. <laughs> Hold it tight. Now that, I'm I like I'm that, uh, that's, that uh, hoodie you're wearing. Oh, is, that's is, a Marquez, Marquez Brownlee hoodie. Is that a Marquez Brownlee? Man. Yes, sir. Yeah. He's he's Matt doing Black, well. Things. I wonder if he'll sell the yeah, tuxedo he's doing pretty he good. wore. Met Gala, right? Yeah, I wonder if he'll <laughs> sell the tuxedo he wore at the Met Gala. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Also with us, Andy Anaka. Let's see who he's plugging today. Good man. The CU Boulder Buffs. Uh, hello. Now, <laughs> Renee, does, does, this, does this mean that, like, there's, like, a YouTube cinematic universe? Like, you and Marquez are, like, <laughs> I just, think like, so. one, one mega event away from, like, being in the same... It's yeah, definitely Met Gala. It's definitely <laughs> a um, world unto itself, really. Uh, these days, I mean, the, the YouTube stars are kind of in their own. They are in their own universe. It's very interesting. I, I can't. I can't give names, but I've heard of a couple of really big events recently where they had like, you know, like like people at the top of Hollywood, the top of the tech industry, and then the top YouTubers, like all just in the same room at the same yeah. time. And they've done that. Yeah. Even yeah. the Met Gala was like that. But cro but I have to say, crossover is not easy. Um, for some reason, uh, just ask annoying orange. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. And for um, a while, YouTube had a fetish with the traditional stars. They would all the top right. studio, like, and they didn't, the late night couldn't make with it. the Jimmy's. Yep. I mean, I guess John Krasinski sort of did with his, uh, during COVID, but, uh, I, I really feel like it's its own universe with its own stars. Anyway, I don't know. That's no, just a philosophical. No, you, no, you, with, no, no you're, you're right. But with, with YouTube, you never get a, you never get a day off. It's, oh, it's like it, all, all the all the people who do well are like no 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 we're we're not skipping this week we're not skipping today oh, we're, yeah. we're putting out something well and that I, was my life at iMore so nothing changed it's sort of the same <laughs> for uh, TikTok like uh, my son's trying to cross over into YouTube as I have urged him to do for some time yeah way better monetization um, and uh, well maybe maybe yes maybe no you, uh, TikTok. Um, some some people are making money. He visited, I don't know who it was, a TikToker's $7 million house over the weekend yeah. and his garage full of cars. <laughs> so somebody's making money. But yeah, Salt yeah. Hank... Just, uh, TikTok's not sharing the money. They're, they're not they sharing it. Uh, well, they shared it with this guy. I have to ask Salt Hank who it was. But he's only got 20,000 uh, YouTube subscribers. So he's got he's got a little ways to there. go. It's get, That's good, right? It's not zero. Yep. Yeah. He's only got a few yeah. videos so far. He's just, he's working on it. Mm -hmm. um, That's awesome. It's hard though. It's hard, I think, to cross over. I think you're, each, yeah, and, each is its own thing. Instagram and, and TikTok, and, and, not so hard. And also, frankly, you know, those seven cars, I'm not sure that I'd want to have a job that required that much driving, you know? <laughs> I mean, having to drive from house to house, building to building, I mean, that's just, I did. what, I, what kind of life is I that? I did tell Hank that, if he makes a lot of money, please do not invest it in cars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> generally a bad Leo investment. Show, Leo? <laughs> On the other hand, if you were to invest your money into some mint in the box 
iPod touches right now, you might be <laughs> you might be pretty loaded. You might don't really? touch those, Renee. Don't even open them. Don't unseal got, them. <clears throat> How many do you have? I got two mint in the box iPod touches here. For some reason, I don't know why I never opened them. And then I've got like the opened versions. I have the open gold version too, but it's out of reach. Wow. The man is flush. Very duplicative. But this is the version. last iPod. And it is now official that after 21 years, it's the end of the line for iPod. Apple announced today that the iPod touch will be available while supplies last. <laughs> but the music lives on, Leo. The music lives on. Oh, I guess. Stop the music. I guess uh, they must have a few in the warehouse. Yeah, that's that. That's such good marketing. Saying like, no, 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 we're not, we're not, we're not end of lifeing and discontinuing a product that we were having. That it, most people wondered why was a surprise. We're still on the on the price list anyway. We're oh no no. This is a limited edition opportunity to be in on the end of a of a of a, te of a term of legend. <laughs> they should have like, made no, NFTs no, no. at least. Well, people are they, fighting for home like for the original HomePods now. Like they they're oh, harder yeah. and harder to get. Yeah. And people are like, just give them to us. Give them to us. They're fighting over them like they're tickle me Elmo dolls or something. So uh, music is always. This is Greg uh, Jaws. We act Jaws. Now a senior vice president of worldwide marketing, he yeah. took Schiller's role. Music has always been part of our core at Apple, bringing it to hundreds of millions of users. In the way iPod did, impacted more than just the music industry. This is actually sounds like hyperbole, but I think it's fair. It also redefined how music is discovered, listened to, and shared. Today, the spirit of iPod lives on. I don't know if that's true. We've integrated an in incredible music experience across all of our products iPhone to the Apple Watch to HomePod Mini and across Mac, iPad, Apple TV. So, bye-bye. <laughs> it was introduced October 23rd, 2001. I vividly remember that day. Uh, it went through a lot of iterations. The shuffle, remember the shuffle? Remember yeah. the, the, the chewing yep. gum? The buttonless shuffle. The buttonless <laughs> shuffle. The iPod Touch was the last version. The wide Nano. Yeah. <laughs> Remember this one? The little clip-on yeah. for yep. sports? Oh. That was a very oh, cool cute. design. Yeah. Uh, what, what killed the iPod Touch? Was it just a... Uh, you know, it became a feature. It's a feature. Yeah. Uh, the iPod, iPod Touch product feature. was 200... How much? 279 bucks? What was it? I don't remember what it got down to. It got down really yeah. low at a certain... Did it? After, okay. Because it's basically an iPhone 5. Like, that thing is... Ancient, yeah, at this point. yeah, but I it think, was I a good it, choice for kids uh, that you didn't want to buy right. them an iPhone, but you wanted to give them something. Yeah, but uh, but it just became like like Renee said, just a real technological relic. And even even the the standalone iPods, they for a long time they had a really important niche, meaning that there are people who are out running, there are people who are exercising who don't want like a thousand dollar phone or five hundred dollar phone falling out falling in their pocket. To say nothing of the, of all that weight, but this beautiful little clip design that would have either a a really cheap iPod that could do, that could play all that digital rights managed iTunes content that they'd purchased, or even this this uh, this poster stamp thing with a screen and a user interface that could have like Nike fitness apps on it. That was a hell of a hell of an object. It was a real moment for Apple design because this is uh, I've. I'm really intrigued by what Apple's design people can do when they're not constrained by form factors that are kind of uh, dictated by conventions where you can say, nope, all we, all we really need is a play and a pause button. Above that, go nuts. Uh, but then, of course, uh, b the the solution to the, hey, I, I'm exercising and I want to be able to listen to music became uh, <laughs> became Apple Watch plus AirPods. And so even that was aced out of the market. They couldn't compete with all the super, super cheap stuff that was out there for people who actually wanted something that if if it fell off their if it fell off their uh, their their t-shirt while they're running you know get get a twenty dollar thing from aliexpress or for, for from no name amazon because you won't care about it otherwise yeah you, you don't want to lose your apple watch yeah right now they're selling the 32 gig ipod touch for 200 bucks yeah uh to 300 bucks for 128 gigs 400 dollars no wonder they're killing this product for 256 gigs. And you probably, you know, you have an iPhone that's got at least 32 gigs free floating around. Uh, I can't see even buying a 32 gig version of this for a kid. The yeah. kid would be insulted. The developer camp was probably the last the thing they used them for was to buy 30 for a developer camp or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also, also and the camera. IPod, you, 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 you want to talk about living in shame, posting to Instagram with a 2000, <clears throat> with, with a, a iPhone 5 level camera on it. Yeah. 
Yeah. You, you, gotta, you gotta wonder why the, the, the thing is I always try to measure my complaints about things because you never know it's, it'd be easy to say oh gosh that was I, I can't believe they still sell that but there's probably a really really esoteric reason why they were selling it that there was some market somewhere that's that insisted that hey we need we need something to run iOS apps but it can't be a phone it can't have a cellular radio in it and they kept it on the market the because Pentagon. <laughs> I don't. Well, you know, Apple, no Apple, Apple, <laughs> Apple has actually, a camera. No, App, yeah. <laughs> Apple actually will sell like a government uh, a, an actual iPhone with actual iPhone branding on it that simply has all the it has no a, a flat, yeah. you know, a, a flat, a, a flat plane on the back of it instead of yeah. a, a cover with the iPhones on it. So yeah. again, I, I keep uh, and given how much it costs to just to do tooling on any new product, it's so I, I wonder who it was who was buying just enough of these or what contract they had that required that hey, if you're going to operate in this market. You must also offer amongst your product line a product that does this that said, you know what, it is just paying the fines would cost more than just keeping this one little tiny product uh, on the assembly line. They lines. overordered. They overordered and took them two yeah. years to clean them out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of, in a way, it's sad. I mean, the iPod really was a transformational object when it came out yeah. in 2001. Uh, there were other MP3 players, but they were big. They were clunky. They were unusable. What was that thing? No, Nomad. That was the, the famous slash dot response to the iPod. Oh yeah, the iPod was. Yep. Not, it's not a Nomad lame. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had a Diamond Rio um, that was close yep. to an iPod. Uh, but but let's not, if you want to listen to the not, car, you had to have you know a, a head unit with a trunk full of hard drives in the back. Yeah. <laughs> No, but it was. It's it, that's a long and wonderful fight. The RAAA tried to have the Diamond Rio actually banned for sale, rendered illegal, saying that because it was a playback device for digital content, right. and because the only the only way you could possibly get digital content was downloading it illegally, because God God knows the technology for converting a CD to an MP3 did not exist. Of course, it did. They said no, no. It's only it's only a device for piracy, and they got damn close to having getting an injunction yeah. to saying to getting that thing banned. And that was so, if, even this tiny little ropey. What was it? A six? It didn't even. It didn't even hold like a full CD's worth of content. And that's at like ancient, like uh, sticks and animal skins strapped together level of <laughs> MP3 of second. music compression. Actually, I used it for audio books because it could play audible books. Yeah. That's the that was the main yeah. reason I had Diamond Rio. Uh, all of that superseded by the iPod, and it didn't. How long do you do you remember how long it took for the iPod to take off? It feels like to me it was an inst it was an overnight. It was yeah. Windows, right? It was it was when oh, you know, it was when it Windows because yes. well. it didn't support Windows at yeah. first, did it? No. Yeah. And it so, was, as I recall, it was it was a big hit with nerds, but a five hundred dollar music player competing with what was then two hundred. The, the big deal was the hard drive because it was the first really effective hard drive based player. The people who were really digital music hadn't really taken off. The RAA had a point in that where most people were getting digital music back then wasn't by ripping CDs; it was by going through LimeWire uh, or Napster or someplace else. Uh, but the it, it, it was a slow it was a slow takeoff. But once it took off, once once people discovered digital music. Once the tools for creating uh, uh, creating your own music files from CDs took off, that's when things really, really hit. And, I and, imagine and one dollar a song. Once you, once you have one. Windows, you, you need you needed the Windows version in order to yeah. you, you can't make a you can't make a lot of money by selling to just eight to nine percent of the entire world P, uh, world desktop market. You have to if you want the, 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 a lot of the money is in the pockets of Windows people. And it was so begrudging, like he so didn't want it, and they had to convince him to do it. And he's like, "Fine, if you do it, it's on you. If it doesn't take off, it's your <laughs> fault." And then he came out with that double cable. He's like, "The Windows machines, the USB is not powerful enough to actually even charge it. Right. So you got to put two cables on the back of your." Windows one, and we want to add a tax to the Mac users. We're going to charge that cable separately. It was just the whole thing was like you could always tell when Steve was slightly angry about a product. <laughs> Tony Fidel, whose book just came out, actually good timing on the book. Tony he was the original designer hired by John Rubenstein, uh, formerly at from General Magic and Philips. He had done the Philips Velo PDA, uh, the Nino PDA. Rubenstein had discovered a Toshiba. Little tiny quarter sized yep. Toshiba hard drive while meeting with an Apple bought supplier in Japan, them. bought the rights for it. And then the question was now what do we do? Uh, Fidel hired in 2001 as an independent contractor to work on the project, then codenamed, I'm reading from Wikipedia, P68. He hired uh, engineers from his startup Fuse, veteran engineers from General Magic and Philips. They had to do it in about eight months. Yeah. Didn't, didn't they, have a lot bought, of time. 
they bought so much stuff off the shelf. Even the OS, even the software was off the shelf that they Pico. modified for their own uses. Uh, the aesthetic inspired by the 1958 brown T3 transistor radio designed by the legendary Dieter Rams. The wheelbase user interface prompted by Bang & Olufsen's Beocom 6000 telephone. Pixo, another company, designed the user interface. Did a good job, right? But it wasn't designed yep. inside Apple. Uh, although Steve, I think, had a lot to say about it. He's said to have dropped a prototype into an aquarium in front of engineers to demonstrate from bubbles leaving its housing yeah. that there is internal <laughs> space to be saved. That's yeah. so savage. <laughs> also, <laughs> yeah, so that's Steve. The the other, the other, the other story I remember from that from the development was that, like again, th this is they they had a deadline, and also Apple did not have infinite resources at that point. They they had basically learned to start treading water at that point, recovering from the the crisis that they were in, and they and and Steve rejected uh, re rejected one of these prototypes because it had a green display, what what was typical at the time, a green backlit uh, LCD display. And he said, no, 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 this has to look, and there's nothing green on this device; it has to be white, and so they had to somehow source from absolutely out of nowhere the, the, a, a very, very rare like white backlit display for this. Like, Steve, we don't have time for this. <laughs> we're, we, we, we are building a life raft. It doesn't matter like where we put the viewports for this. There, are no, there aren't going to be any windows. We're trying to get off this island and survive. A guy named Vinny Chico or Chieco, freelance copywriter who had been hired... Uh, as a contractor by Apple to figure out how to introduce this new thing to the public, gave it the name iPod. After Chico saw a prototype, he thought of the movie 2001 and the phrase, open the pod bay doors, Al. I had no idea that we call ourselves a podcast because of 2001, a space odyssey. Why, Leo? <laughs> I'm sorry, Dave. I can't do that. Uh, it's the EVA pods of the Discovery One spaceship, yeah. and of course, Hal never did open those doors. Um, wow! And now that same legacy is, is reflected in Siri, because that's, that's now Siri's catchphrase. <laughs> uh, five Sorry. gigabyte hard product. drive. That was, of course, the tagline. A thousand mechanical songs hard drive <laughs> in your pocket. A mechanical yeah. Toshiba hard drive. A thousand songs in your pocket. They were really good at the messaging, though. The messaging was so simple. A dollar a song, a thousand songs in your yeah. pocket. The entire way through, it was the, the experience was so clean. And I think he was right. Like, to compete with the Napsters and all of the free downloads, you had to make it easy. That was the only way you were going to ever compete with them. And that got him a lot of buy-in, a lot of product traction. Yeah. yeah. That, we, we, we really do have him to thank for that because we forget about how, hor how horrified a lot of these uh, the, the companies were about digital music to begin with. Sony, you would think they... They created the Walkman. They created this product category, and their solution was uh, because because they were their own music distributors. They had uh, they started putting copy protection on CDs that would that would install essentially malware on every single PC that this disc was inserted to to make it really difficult to uh, to rip the CD. And they also created this uh, the, the, if you bought if you paid the money if you'd given them your money to own a, a Sony digital music player, uh, the software that was required to install music on it would instantly take a look grab all of your mp3s convert them into a locked proprietary sony format and i'm talking about the stuff you already own the stuff that you would already legally actually converted from cd and made you sign it in and sign it out when you put it into the player this is the the the, the strong arm just just like we have the, the whole world has steve jobs to thank for the idea of uh, phone carriers no longer ordering phone manufacturers here is the device that we want you to build for us here are the limitations we are going to put on you so that you don't stress our network that was uh, steve jobs talked them out of that steve jobs had to talk uh, and apple had to talk the music industry down from look People are either going to be getting your music illegally because you're not making it easy or even possible to get it digitally, or they're going to be buying it from you through the iTunes store. We have to make it easy. We have to make it simple. I, I, I understand that even the argument about copy protection was wasn't. I, I don't think it was a, a fighting point, but it was something that Apple didn't want but had to accede to because otherwise they're not going to actually get there. Again, there's so Apple gets Eventually, so much credit for they the wore stuff them, they did, but yeah, they wore them down on copy protection, and for better or worse. Uh, Steve said, you got to be able to sell your songs individually. And yeah. a lot of, yeah. this is for better or for worse, because a lot of artists still bemoan the loss of the album 
uh, you know, as a uh, kind of work of art, as a coherent whole. But really, as soon as the 99 cents... I feel that way about sing- chapters on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> right. As, yeah. yeah, chapters. <laughs> screw them. As soon as 99 <laughs> cent songs came out... Buy your book uh, by chapters. <laughs> right. People people bought started buying individual songs. It was really the end of yeah. the album as a work of art, I think. Which yeah. was good and bad because some artists really put a lot of love and value and thought and, and preparedness into an album. And some were like, well, we need one or two hit tracks. Some it was shovelware. Yeah. Just, yeah. And then, yeah, then just fill it up. Yeah. And that I, maybe that is as much responsible for the for the demise of the album as as yeah. as Steve Jobs, frankly, because a lot of albums yeah. were crap. I bought my sister back in two thousand six the U two. Remember the U two version? Yeah, it had a black back, a red front. It th- only had thirty gigs, YouTube. but it came. What did I say? YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. YouTube. We're, we're talking YouTube. about YouTube. I'm YouTube. talking about Bono. <laughs> uh, it came the with. Uh, uh, I think did it come with the entire. U2, uh, um, I think so. I think it did. I remember. I remember. I, remember I was at the event, so I got. I got great. I got great. Like fourth row pictures of like the of Bono, Bono and the and Edge. edge. Yeah. With, this was before yeah. people got mad about Apple preloading U2. U2 yeah. Content this was back device, in 2006 so, yeah. when people <laughs> liked U2. Still, right. Actually, I like him again after after Bono uh, and Edge played. Uh, the Edge played in the uh, subway and. Kiev uh-huh. uh, over the weekend. Um, so yeah, that was a class. That was an iPod. I don't know how long it was available, but I think if you had an in the box U two iPod, that might be worth something. And those ads, made, like the they, ads they, with the white headphones, like the all they, black. That's the other thing. They the made white, white so headphones iconic. a signature. Yeah. Uh, everybody else's headphones were black. You knew immediately somebody had an iPod. You're sitting on the subway. There's the white headphones, and of course. I don't know if they did that. Do you think they were smart enough to say that's uh, that's going to be our signature, the white headphones? They did by I think the time they were those smart ads enough to came lean out. into their like. It, it seems like Steve was also very good at leaning in to constraints, like the things that he had to put up with. Like I remember, like with Snow Leopard, they were saying he's like, "There's not enough new features. There's no way I'm going up on stage and embarrassing myself." But what if we said there's yeah. no new features? Okay, there's no new features. Here's like, the, like, the, here's, the uh, into here's the iconic uh, dancing iPod ads where you see those white headphones. In fact, it's the only color. It's all silhouettes. The dancers yeah. and they're holding their white iPod and the white headphones. Yeah. It really became a signature That's a trademark. Creative era for their ads. This is two thousand six. This came out. Yeah. So. Or how about how about how about this for for amazing that the HP they actually licensed it to HP. So there was an HP branded yeah, one. Yeah, I remember that. That flopped, right? Yeah, but still, it was it was a real iPod. It was what a, what an. There aren't odd really choice. HP fanboys. <laughs> yeah, out there. Um, let me see if I can find. The first iPod ad. I think this is it. Here, let me turn the sound on. Go ahead, John. I think this is the, oh, yeah. the guy sitting at a yeah, yeah. classic white MacBook. He's got a bunch of CDs in he front of all him. of us, Leo. He's rocking out. He's he's whip, he's dragging the what? Updating songs on what? An iPod, Firewire, Firewire. baby, <laughs> and now a thousand songs in his pocket. That's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Very first iPod ad. Uh, and I hope the music industry does forgives us the use of whatever song. I'm blanking on his name, but there was that fashion icon uh, they were talking about recently uh, who had like a thousand iPods with like little labels on them with all his different music all the time loaded up for him. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think my favorite iPod was this one. And John lent me this one. This is the iPod Classic. And this is the one with 160 yeah. gigs, which at the time was massive. Still a little hard drive in here. Yep. And uh, I bought several. One, I got got uh, a pair that I could exchange with my mom. So I'd put stuff on it, send it to her. She'd send the old one back. <laughs> and I'd put new stuff on it. I hope she still has those. Uh, John, you carry this. this great- is, you use this in your car, right? This is your, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it, it, it was a it great was a story great... about the Lord of the Rings last movie was so big it couldn't fit on anything except an iPod Classic. One hundred sixty. They didn't have fiber maybe. to the studio. Yeah, so they put the Return of the King on this iPod and then they'd walk it to the fiber optic station every day. And a couple of times they thought people were following them and they would just like hurry run across <laughs> or put on some headphones stuff and rock scored. out. Yeah, they were so big. Yeah, <laughs> it was a it was it was a great it was a great value because it was people forget how much this it really lived up to the name iPod. Where at at the time I really thought, geez, isn't that interesting? Where 
number one, they're not specifically labeling it a music player. Number two, there's nothing, the, even the fact that here is the play pause button, the most important thing on a music player, it was this tiny little gray silk screen on a white background on one of these little orbital buttons. Uh, and it, they really eventually made it into a container for what have you, that if, if it was a hard drive, if you connected it to your uh, to your system, so that, yeah, it was, a, it was a great way to sort of put a, you needed a hard drive for work, but you wanted your boss to buy you like a really sophisticated music player iPod. But also it was a great demo of iSync because it could then sync notes. It could sync, uh, it could sync uh, calendar contacts, stuff like that. Eventually it, wasn't a, it had a, it wasn't screen, a tiny screen, but you could watch movies on, right? And yeah, you, exactly. I mean, I don't know if anybody did, but I remember putting TV shows on my oh, yeah. iPod. Oh, no, uh, I might that was watch them. <laughs> they kept making a big deal of uh, when uh, when uh, video came to iTunes that hey, look, here's the best play. Here's here's how to watch Shrek on your on your uh, on, on a tiny little screen that's about even smaller than a phone screen. Yeah, but but it, but it looked great. All of this changed in 2007 when the iPhone came out. Yeah, or yeah. at least started. It made to the change. iPod into a button. It was literally a button on the iPhone yeah. interface. Yeah, they called it an iPod, and of course, Steve yeah. Jobs. Famously, you know, it's an internet. It's a what do you say? A communicator. It's an iPod. It's it's a phone. <laughs> it's an, it's an iPod. iPod. It's an internet yeah. communication yeah, device. Yeah, yeah, all three, right? Uh, and that really, I think, you know, if if you look back to the beginning of the end, as long ago as that was, fifteen years ago, it was, you know, the beginning of the end. Well, I think that's, that's what Tony said in his book. Like they were working on these three projects. Like they were working on the touchscreen project. They were working on the widescreen iPod project, and they were working on the the like the phone sort of project. And then they realized it really was the same thing. It was an integrated yeah. device that was their biggest yeah. threat yeah. in the market. Yeah. Uh, but that's where Apple's always ex excelled: the willingness to kind of eat their children and. Whoa! I don't know what's happening. Yeah, cannibalism. <laughs> oh, are you putting? You're putting. A a, we're gonna have a little. Uh, we're gonna have a little uh, background uh, dancing. <laughs> for I don't have those Ritchie. moves though. I don't I, have those moves. I, you know, the other thing is those ads sold records. I mean, if you got on, a, if you were yeah. lucky enough to have a song on an iPod commercial. I remember the one with the one, two, three, or later yeah. Apple commercials. Yeah. They really sold records. That was a great. I just way. think of the same one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I still I I still have music, and when I go whenever I go through the folder of my music library, that's just like I call it orphan tracks, the ones that don't belong, aren't part of like a whole album that I own. It's like, gee, where did that come from? Oh, that's right, it was a, it was an i it was an iPod ad, and I liked it so much that I had to have it. There's a song by Jet that was used that was like that was like my jam for the entire year. This was the first ad to say yeah, at the very Apple. end, Mac or PC. That was around yeah. what was that 2005. And then in 2006, see if you recognize the uh, dancers in the upcoming ad, because I think this is when uh, the, um, this is a great, uh, oh, this is not the one I was thinking of. This is a great, uh, here it is, great YouTube. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. Oh, yeah. What this is a great day. YouTube. Every Apple iPod ad ever, 2000. Uh, the Coldplay one was terrific as well. Was there a Coldplay iPod? Yeah. No, yeah, but they had it was an iTunes or iPod. Oh, really? Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Wow. I put I, I put a link to my. There, there's a Flickr uh, uh, Flickr album online of my pictures from uh, uh, from the U2 event. It was oh, <laughs> it was pretty. Oh, it was I'll pretty go, cool. we'll go I, look at that. I, I, put, as, I, I put the I put that in the show notes if you want to use as it. As soon as, as Bono and and uh, the Edge stop uh, performing for us <laughs> silently, again, thank you, music industry, for making it uh, impossible yeah. to play any music even if it's newsworthy on our shows. Yeah. And, and artists, you can thank your labels for uh, eliminating the chance to get any promotion yeah. at all yeah. <laughs> from, from our show. Yeah, the, um, the, other, the, other, the other cool iPod thing, they, uh, what, what, what Apple anniversary was it where they, uh, they gave away post, like really nice art posters of uh, the Macintosh lady from the, Mac, from the 1984 commercial. You know, again, the, the iconic uh, frame when she's got the sledgehammer, she's running through the aisle with the Apple, with a Macintosh t-shirt in, but they added, digitally added in like iPods and <laughs> iPod head phones and an iPod clip to her waist. That's on my wall in another room. That's right. The weird thing is right now, like you can get a ton of music on TikTok and I think YouTube Shorts is starting to do that as I well. Know. So the, obviously some benefit. Well, they make deals. Some very narrow use cases. They make deals. Here was yeah. the uh, here was the iPod that uh, you might have watched Shrek on. Get ready for this one. It's coming <laughs> up here. Uh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, it was a very weird fatty iPod because uh, it had a. It, yeah, <laughs> it lasted a year. It, it only lasted a year, really. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, that was when 9 to 5 Mac uh, famously leaked and got into a whole brouhaha about that sort of, I think, made them famous at the same time. Yeah. I really didn't want to watch videos on that. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Again, the, 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 whole, the whole thing was like sink, like sink everything onto this yeah. one thing. Yeah. And, and also it was, it was kind of magical. When episode one of, uh, of, the, of, the, of Star Wars, like obviously, obviously I had to like start waiting in line, like outside the theater. I had my ticket. I, I already, I'd already gotten in line eight, 10 hours earlier, uh, two months ago to buy, my, to buy my tickets to the first showing first day. But I had to get in line like 10 hours earlier. I loaded up, I, I I, I think I had a Palm device, and I think I might have had. I'd have to check to see if it, if it was an iPod thing. But I had the entire like original trilogy loaded up on these devices, just watching it on these tiny screens. Uh, and it was so, it's it's hard for generations to understand what a weird and wonderful thing that was. Where now we just stream yeah. whatever it is to whatever device we have. The idea of not only having it in a digital format to begin with, instead of like on DVD or on some sort of physical physical media, but also I, this device in my pocket i can just sit here i, I think there i think there were people who actually like brought a tv and a vcr to, to, to enjoy it and entertain the people in the lobby but i'm like screw that it's just for me tony so that's, that, that would have been a big deal tony fidel tweeted anyone want to see what i unearthed when i cleaned out my garage and found photos of everything i've ever made <laughs> <laughs> in six uh, full boxes full home depot uh, uh, you've got it right on concrete no <laughs> moisture moisture <laughs> Uh, looks like he's got a few exercise items too that he no longer uses. Uh, let's uh, anyway. iPod. It's been a really Rolling great out. twenty years. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we raise a glass to you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. It's still the last the one one last a cl a clip for that. That it, this the the product lines the product category still exists, but now it's in the form of these thousand dollar two thousand dollar like high end audiophile like. Uh, audio players that are the size of like a TV remote control from like 1988, <laughs> but but they but they're gonna tell you that oh no 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 this is this will this will unwrap the, the uh, uh, like uh, 320 k bit, uh, bits per second like 96 bit wide path look at look at look at the alloy metal that we made all the interconnects inside the device of we've got a totally isolated uh, audio path between them uh, I mean it's like yeah I think you've kind of lost the plot I I still I do have a Sony A55 five like digital walkman because i do like the idea of having my entire music library on one device and i can't afford like a one terabyte phone or at least like, as of two years ago i couldn't so it's an interesting category but it's nice that it's 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 still there there's still people out there so if you want if the but the the the, the sad irony is that if you want an ipod shuffle now uh or excuse me a, a, an ipod an ipod right now you have to buy like a sony device that runs android and it will <laughs> well the ipod it's funny because <laughs> the ipod killed physical media and it wasn't long before the itunes store became the number one place people bought music not the record store but now streaming music and spotify yeah. you know gets credit for this because apple came late to the game has really replaced digital copies of music so andy you might have wanted a terabyte of music in your pocket but nowadays with streaming you, you all you just ask need for is, a song and it plays yeah you need yeah. a connection yeah. here's some of andy's pictures you did have good seats what camera were you using uh, oh god, that was like a that was an ancient oh, like was a Panasonic too. Oh no, that that was that was later. These I was shooting video and pictures. Some of the best pictures I got were from the video. Oh, okay. but yeah, that 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 was from uh, a really really cheesy a Kodak. No Kodak digital camera a, that I liked very much. Kodak. Yeah. Wow, here's Steve with uh, with the uh, yeah. I could I could tell this is the Kodak. <laughs> wow! Look 2000, how 2006 man. Look, look how grainy that is. Yeah. Actually, I bet, I, I bet with AI t AI tools, I could like increase clean the resolution. That up. And, yeah. Yeah. Wow. But you know what? That I'm looking at the the original uh, pictures. Uh, that was a small theater. I don't know where that was. Yeah. That was the. Where was I, that? I, I, I think it was the San, I think it was the San Jose Theater. O'Reilly O'Mac O Conference Center. <laughs> you say you list on here. Uh, yeah, it must have been San Jose. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, what a what a what a great time. There's that black and red. Um, yeah. Beautiful U2 iPod. <sighs> oh, and the yeah, iPod socks funny. were announced as well at that yes. event. <laughs> I miss those. That was a crazy yeah. product. 
This is this is this is the this is the only this is the only argument that I will tolerate. The Apple has lost its soul since Apple since Steve Jobs passed away. Like iPod sucks. It's such a ridiculous thing, but it was such a lovely thing. It was such an Apple thing. <laughs> Well, I, I, yeah, I guess I don't. It's bizarre. <laughs> it's just bizarre. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and obviously somebody convinced Steve. Yeah, Steve. That's what people really want: socks for their iPod. We need accessories. Maybe. We need accessories. Maybe. Come up with some accessories. I remember maybe, though, MacWorld Expo a- some years later was basically the iPod accessory show, right? Yeah. Then it became the iPhone accessory. That was show. the iPhone accessory show. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. I went for a walk this morning with my Apple Watch and my AirPods. You know, that's it. I didn't have to have anything didn't need else. Anything with else. Me. It gave that's me right. The exact same vibe that the i that the iPod used yeah. to give me, and I was super happy listening to Audible. Just walking down the street. Very portable. Fine. Yep. You're yeah. streaming it. You didn't even really, know it was there. Yeah. Um, it is, according to Wikipedia, the longest run of any Apple product ever. Twenty years in active production. Hmm. I think the Mac has lasted longer, but I guess any well. Yeah. No, the Mac it's has the longest lesson. now currently dead product. Maybe that's it. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to correct Wikipedia. Now that I think about it, citation needed. Citation definitely needed. Renee, Richie, Andy, and Ak, I'm glad you could be with with me for the saying goodbye. We're here together at the end, Leo. At the end. At the end. Look what I got. Every here. great story needs an ending. That's only when you really understand it. That's impact. really true. If it's not, the story yeah. hasn't been told until it ends. And right, then yeah. the full story comes out. So I think that's also true. the also the, it's a classic case of the past is prelude. This is part of a long, ongoing story that began before the iPod and continues after the iPod. Yeah. Our show today brought to you by Blue Land. I tell you, if you want our story in Planet Earth to continue, one of the first one of the things we got to do is stop the single use plastics. We might also want to stop wasting water too. Blue Land has been a revelation for our family. An estimated 5 billion plastic hand soap and cleaning bottles are thrown away every year. And every single plastic bottle ever made is still sitting in that landfill. They don't break down. They stay there forever. And if that's not bad enough, all of those plastic bottles of cleaners and hand soap are 90% water. You're, you're driving trucks around del- delivering water. That's a lose-lose for the planet and for your pocketbook. Stop wasting water. Stop throwing out plastic. Get Blue Land's revolutionary refill cleaning system instead. Blue Land was founded on the belief that a cleaner planet starts by eliminating plastic waste while creating powerful, effective cleaners for your entire home. Forget that notion you might have. Oh, I can't have a good cleaner if I'm trying to save the planet. That's not true. Blue Land's idea is simple. You buy the bottle once. This is the uh, the uh, forever bottle for the multi-surface cleaner. These are lightweight but hard plastic. But you, there's also for the uh, hand soap, they are heavier because you have to pump them. And so those are nice solid glass. They're great. Uh, you buy this once and you refill it forever, which means no more plastic waste. The refills are just these little tablets. You fill this with hot water up to the line. You put the tablet in, it fizzes, it dissolves. Now you've got excellent cleaners, a multi-surface cleaner, a window cleaner, a hand soap, all smelling great. Iris agave, perine lemon, lavender eucalyptus. I bought the Christmas package last Christmas. It was great. Every time I washed my hands, it smelled like gingerbread or peppermint. <laughs> it was fantastic. Uh, these are great, beautiful Instagram grammable bottles uh, and they and they work really well the only thing you'll have to throw out is your outdated idea that eco-friendly products cost more and work less uh, from there and by, you can also get it for a kit which is a great housewarming gift I might add I gave it I've already given it to my uh, daughter as a housewarming gift from their best-selling clean essentials kit to their hand soap duo and plastic free laundry and dishwasher tablets we use those too in fact I was putting clothes in the dryer at a rare moment for me. Lisa, Lisa said, could you put the clothes in the dryer? I said, fine. She said, don't forget to put in the Blue Land wool balls. We got three of those. I said, do these really help? She said, yeah, cut static, dries faster, don't have to use dryer sheets. Love those. Love those. And you know what sells out every time? The Blue Land toilet tablet cleaner. These are so cool because you put them in, do the rest of your sinks and stuff, come back, brush out the toilet, you're done. They sell out so fast because they work so 
well. Blue Land's stunning high-quality forever bottles start at just $10 when you buy a kit. They're meant to be reused forever. The money-saving refill tablets start at just $2. Yes, you can get a replenishment uh, subscription. I do. So I, I never run out. Actually, it's interesting. I think because of Blue Land, everybody's washing their hands more. I noticed the hand soap runs out, but I don't mind because I've got plenty of tablets. Just put another one in. That's interesting. I'm just thinking around the house. I think because it smells so good. Try Blue Land today. You'll love it. And the planet will thank you. Right now, you can get 20% off your first order when you go to blueland.com slash MacBreak. 20% off the first order of any Blue Land products. Blueland.com slash MacBreak. Blueland.com slash MacBreak. Thank you, Blueland, for supporting MacBreak Weekly. You support us when you use that address. So make sure you do blueland.com slash MacBreak. You'll also get 20% off. Business Insider. Apple is planning to shake up its massive services business to push further into streaming and advertising. Eddie Q is getting the job of reorganizing the management structure. This is sources uh, talking to Business Insider. Um, Q is giving more responsibility to services VP Peter Stern and ads boss Todd Teresi. $76 billion business. That's the App Store, Peter that's Store Apple Music, that's iCloud, that's no, Apple Care, Apple Pay, Apple News, Advertising, Apple TV Plus. It grew 17% in the last quarter, as we talked about last week. If it were a company by itself, it would be the 113th largest company on the Fortune 500 list by <laughs> revenue. <laughs> Behind several other independent Apple companies. <laughs> yeah, right. One person, this is, again, Business Insider, one person who has spoken directly to Q, said the Senior Vice President of Services is considering how to unleash growth by reorganizing the management structure and pushing harder into areas like streaming and advertising. Yeah. Growth is the enemy of us all. Uh, but but Apple's soul, come on. Wouldn't you rather have them struggling? But I just I really wish soul. Apple was not in advertising. Like I love the streaming stuff. I think Peter yeah. Stern is phenomenal. I think they're doing great, great services products. I think ad like I know like a lot all of us depend on ads. And I, I have nothing against ads in particular, but I think with the positions that Apple has taken and the way that they've aligned their businesses, ads are just not compatible with that. And I fully understand yeah. Steve did I ads and he thought, you know, there's people within Apple who believe that they can do ads right, but it's just it's hard to be the company company that, you know, does ad tracking transparency and then offers ads like in any way, shape or form. It just doesn't pass the Caesar's wife test with me. And uh, I wish that wasn't a, uh, I, I know there's so much money that could be made there. I just wish it wasn't a focus area. Where are the ads right now? They're in apps, the app store and Apple yeah, News, Yeah, Apple is right? horrible. Apple News is it's like worse to read than some websites now because they yeah, have those giant yeah. ads in, in use every Apple third, News. every second paragraph. Yeah. Also, 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 I wish that Apple were a bit more transparent in where they're selling ads or where they're selling placement more than anything else. Like, I, I've, I'm still kind of horrified that after so many years since the last time that the App Store was reorganized, there's still no way to say, look, don't sort this, don't preference this, don't give me any editor's choice, don't give me anything. Just, I will I will sit here for, I have planned the entire next day and a half to look through every single listing in, ut in the utilities category. Just let me see everything you have without my having to do a search or anything like that. And you always feel feel as though uh, the, it's the Netflix effect where are you showing me what you have or are you showing me what you've been hired to promote? Yeah. So Todd Teresi, uh, who's a name you may not remember, was in fact the guy in charge of IAD, uh, which launched right. in 2010, shut in 2016 because it never really got much of the mobile ad market. Uh, so he's getting another shot. He's back in the chair according to a source who spoke to Apple, to a Business Insider. Um, services is going to benefit from, I think, considerably from sports, right? Uh, the, the, the Hollywood rumor is that, that the NFL Sunday ticket deal is already done, just not announced yet. Uh, they want to buy NBA rights, which would be interesting. They already have Friday Night Baseball. Uh, this is Ed Dresser, president of a, a sports TV consultancy, Dresser Sports Media. The unique situation with Apple is it has a relatively small base for Apple TV+. Plus. The addition of Sunday Ticket would allow them to increase their base subscription level, a metric in the business known as Lyft. It's good for your Lyft. Yeah, cricket. <laughs> Just sign up some cricket. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. New subscribers, additional revenue for add-on sports package. 
advertising. That's another place advertising can go, right? They should do a deal with Ryan Reynolds for that that、uh, soccer club he bought with、uh, the guy from. <laughs> oh, I'm blanking on his name. The guy from Mythic Quest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah.、Uh, I yeah. You know what? I think so- I think Apple is the company to make soccer big in America. <laughs> Again, so- soccer, soccer, and cricket. Like these are these are two untapped. They, they, untapped. They, they, yeah, exactly. There's、uh, you want to make a joke about you know ESPN eight the Ocho, but be, but get the get the sports that like are, have everything that American sports fans would want. To say nothing about the people who are who came here from countries where soccer and cricket are like the major sports. That's a huge market that they could be tapping into, and I can't imagine that. Uh, it's as competitive bidding for、uh, for international cricket as it's going to be. For, excuse me, excuse me for、U- United States rights to international cricket. The fact that you can't even watch it anywhere except for whatever's being posted on YouTube. That's such a big opportunity. It could be a great signature for Apple. That's a really good point. I, you know,、uh, I hope they're listening to us today. Yeah, <laughs> women's women's sports. I'm, I'm women's sorry, sports. Let's, let's, let's、yeah. Women's sports. Yeah.、Uh, again, so, some of the some some of the greatest amount of time I spend watching sports are like women's collegiate、uh, softball that I kind of happened into through a Google recommendation, and now it's like, my God, this is like they're they're quick. They're not. It's college sports, so it's not you know, MLB. So there isn't like 80 million ads, but also they get through it really quick. The level of play is、so、as high、good. as any other、oh, collegiate it's sport. So good. Yeah. And. And,、uh, and again, and this is also a category that is just not being,、uh, for sexism, for whatever reason you want to mention, they are not being supported with lots of corporate dollars. If Apple were to say that we got, we are going to, we are going to be the home of WNBA, wouldn't that be a, amazing? A because a because we can snap that up for, for, for not much money, but also because these this is a, a totally ignored area of sports that needs、uh, that that needs、uh, that that will be boosted by the support of a, of a channel like Apple TV Plus. Anyway, lots、mm-hmm. of things they could be doing with sports above the traditional. Hey, we're gonna co- we're gonna compete with Fox and. CBS for、uh, for MLB for for、uh, for football and for and for basketball.、Uh, I think、Sports、they、pros. I think they covered this、uh, maybe on the Tech News Weekly, but Apple, Google, and Microsoft together on May fifth announced yeah. Yeah. that they are going to expand support of the FIDO standard F I D O and the FIDO Alliance, which is a passwordless. Sign-in standard. I think everybody in、uh, certainly Microsoft has been saying this for a long time. Yeah, everybody agrees passwords have got to go. Yeah, and、uh, the FIDO Alliance seems to be the closest thing, except for Steve Gibson's Squirrel, which unfortunately I don't、mm. know how nobody seems to want to adopt.、Um, the expanded standards. This is from Apple's press release. The expanded standards-based capabilities will give websites and apps the ability to offer an end-to-end passwordless. Option users will sign in through the same action they take multiple times each day to unlock their devices. So fingerprint, face, yeah, like a, a token,、pin. basically. So once、yeah. you're once you're logged into your device, then you're automatically logged in. Is that it to the websites, or it just automatically says hello? The authentication Basic- generates a token. We token know it's him because he,、yeah. or her. Uh, essentially, the the entity that wants to be authenticated doesn't do the authentication itself. It sim- just simply asks the device you're device. using, "Hey, is this person who he、yeah. claims to be?" And that's it. This which, seems which right because exactly because the the fingerprint on my phone is way better than any password that I can remember. And if I want to have something, if I want to base my login on something even more secure than that, saying that here is a physical device that I have to have that will only work with between these two hours in this physical location, I could switch to that too. It is such a long. Overdue thing, and it solves a hard problem that nobody,、uh, no, that no user likes because you you have to, you have to have strong passwords, but strong passwords is the, are the enemy of、uh, of sec- of security because people are going to choose one two three four five six seven eight the eighth time that they have to reset their password. <laughs> I hope、this、Steve Gibson、uh, covers this、uh, on security <laughs> now today or at some time. Now, there, I don't want to be a pooper of the parties here, but like they they do have to be careful with this. Like for example, Google has a very good authentication system. System. They have a very bad reauthentication system. The difference, well, first they shouldn't have both, but they do. They're both separate things, and they have separate feature sets. So, for example, if I go to log into my Gmail account, 
and it doesn't recognize me, it'll say, do you want to use Authenticator? Do you want to have an SMS if you have that set up? Do you want to have a, another device? Like you want to get your Pixel phone or your iPhone? And that's all great. But for the reauth, it'll just say, you need to find iPhone 5. And I have no idea what iPhone 5 is. I have no idea where it is. It might be in a different part of the world. It might be in a drawer. I might have sent it back to Apple. Do you want to use a different <laughs> method? Sorry, you can't. Well, in uh, theory, that's happened, like, so many Fido times would solve traveling. this. And maybe that's, maybe I, I hope Google will go to this. Um, according to the Apple press release, one of the things Fido does is allow users to automatically access their credentials. Uh, sometimes you use the word pass key on many devices, yeah. even new ones without having to re-enroll every account. So you mm -hmm. can, I guess, Apple or Google or Microsoft would act as a trusted third party. You could say, hey, Microsoft, new device please authenticate this one, and then the authentication goes forwards. It also enab enables users to use FIDO authentication on their mobile device to sign into an app or website on a nearby device, regardless of, yeah. independent of OS or browser. So I have my iPhone. This is now becoming, and I think this is, this makes a lot of sense. This is my authenticator. And I have my iPhone, and I, pu I put it near my PC, my Windows PC, and the PC says, I see it's you, Leo, because you've authenticated using Face ID. That's a, yeah. that is a, I would love It'll to see that. challenge you for like yeah. a bank. The banks are doing that it already. Does. They're challenging you yeah. to authenticate on a device app. Yeah. It, it, it does it does also illustrate another possible uh, thing that we need to watch out for that if government services do uh, are a thing that is on the surface quite responsible and saying that hey look we're not going to allow people to access your accounts to access your information unless we're going to demand this higher level of authentication this higher level of security which is good for most people but now you can't have a system in which uh, like uh, the state government for uh, for government benefits for your snap benefits they can't say oh well we we won't authenticate you unless you have a smartphone with these capabilities because a lot of the people oh, who that's require right. these services don't have these things. So yeah, there has to be a fallback. It has to accommodate people yeah. who are not going to have the technology. And I also be concerned that it's somewhat less secure because it's single factor. It's just biometrics. Yeah. So I, I would hope there would be a way to say, no, and I want a second factor in addition right. to the biometric. It's sort of like one and a half because you it's, you have to have the object as well. So you have to be like the thing that you are, your fingerprint, and, and the object that will yeah, recognize So it is still two-factor, like isn't it? You're device. right. Yeah. Yeah. You're well, right. one and a half, I'm not going to go all the way to two. Yeah. yeah. I, well, I can understand that these companies would like to make it easier. Uh, they understand the current system is v horribly insecure because most users reuse passwords. They don't have yeah. good passwords. I mean, it's already they so bad them always. that anything better is going to be more secure. But it, is it as secure as people like us who know what we're doing, who use two factories, use a YubiKey, for instance, and Touch ID? And so can we make it as secure as we want it to be? Yes, it's better for most people. Yeah. But is it going to add be, another factor? If is you it want going to be dumbing to. it yeah. down? Yeah. My my yeah. my understanding of the standard is that it's it's agnostic, so that whatever, so that if I decide that no 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 I want to have the secure key plugged into a USB C port plus this other form of authentication, Good. But so long as that so long as that step has been achieved, the site at the other end doesn't care how it's been achieved. So yeah. if I and if I do want to have a password like one two three four five six seven eight and no authority is preventing me from doing that, I could also do that. But as soon as as soon as people say, "Oh, look, the people who have a phone made in the past five, six, or seven years," as soon as they say, "Well, just put, touch your uh, fingerprint authenticate on this device, and now you're you're good for pretty much everywhere you go." How do you, you know solve that? this for people who don't have a phone? As you as you pointed out, Andy, this is problematic. I think I, I think you have to I think you have to stick to like old fashioned like really really strong passwords. It's it's a I, I don't know what this what the solution would be. Uh, a, a non this is this, this is a solution that if you have technology you're golden. If you don't have technology, you kind of have to stick with the old stuff. But you have to make sure that there is always that other door. Just, just like every other every time there is a, a, a big initiative to saying hey for, from now on all of your government benefits can be paid electronically into a, uh, into uh, uh, into a bank account early. We're going to have a portal website so that you don't have to go to eight different sites to manage. This is one desktop for everything. You always have to have that 800 number. You always have to have that phone line for people who just yeah. have access to a telephone and are lucky to have that. You have to account for people who don't have uh, a fixed address that or don't even have access to banking. That uh, there, It's because it's these one, two, three percent, sometimes 10 percent uh, of the population that need these services the most and ha are, are going to be suffering the most if they get shut out. I expect to hear something from Google tomorrow. We're going to be covering Google I.O. Keynote, 10 a.m. Yep. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. 
Jeff Jarvis, Jason Howell, and I will be uh, watching the keynote. So I expect Google's part of this alliance. I expect to hear them say something. I'm sure Apple will, as they did, by the way, last year at WWDC. I'm sure they will go further Their into this. Their team is amazing. Like every every week or so, you see a tweet go by with someone who just figured out that they could do automatic uh, SMS. Pa uh, code filling and there's like give, give a raise to whoever invented this and i look over at the guy's account who invented this. that is a I'm nice so feature <laughs> isn't that a nice feature i just love that yeah. yeah um and i hope that companies don't see this as a, a way to lock people into their devices or their phones or yeah. you know this really needs to be an industry-wide kind of uh initiative well, it's that everybody is but facebook so far right <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, Facebook and Twitter, where the hell are you? There's, there's Elon will have his own money problem. every time someone Twitter's logs got into something. Right now. Yeah, he'll have, uh, he'll have <laughs> Musk Biggest. authentication. Although the market, is, the, market is fixing, the market is fixing that right now. Yeah. <laughs> Why, is it with Tesla stock or Twitter stock? The stock both? is so far down, I don't know if I'll have enough money to buy Twitter anymore. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, 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 ay. We almost it's had a, weird a when Musk the free show. Creating, the 2020s create and solve their own problems. It's yeah. just so weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all in one massive stroke. Uh, do you think WWDC will be the uh, unveil of Apple's AR? You know, I don't. No. I would love it to, but I, don't, I think it's too early. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll see the Mac Pro. I just don't think we'll see the. I think. I, I think that's uh, the only thing that I'd, I'd be willing to bet for sure is that this year there will be outside parties who have been seated with hardware and dev kits, so that they can a uh, dog food test their own uh, the, their own system outside the outside of the uh, the company, but also so that. At the time when they first show this this thing, they can't just show, and here is a box, and now here is a clown sitting on top of the. They have to show something real, something that is, is even going to want developers to invest two or three thousand dollars in advanced hardware, so that they can hopefully chase after the money that comes a year after the developer hardware comes out. Art so that, that's the only thing. That's the only thing I believe for sure. Article in Protocol, Yanko Wreckers writing: Apple is a massive force in AR. It's also been holding the technology back. That's not what Yanko's saying. That's what some are saying in AR, uh, including immersive computing uh, specialist Christopher Lepkowski, who says Apple's been a drag on innovation in web AR, primarily because they haven't put it in the i they haven't put it in the iPhone. Um, Web-based AR support is still lacking. Um, Yanko says. This is where we need Alex. The company, you I know. Need to Alex for this. Well, yeah, but he also is so bullish on it that sometimes it's like, well, okay, okay. Uh, a thousand engineers working on AR glasses at Apple um, plans to release something, according to uh, everyone, including they have a Mark. Huge Gurman. office in Boulder, Colorado now. This year, for Boulder, AR interesting. Yeah. Uh, they have that framework. They have USDZ. Alex is always singing its praises. His favorite. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, it's interesting, like if they, if they were going to release the headset, like actually release it in September, I would expect developer announcement in June. Right. But if they're if the if it's not going to come out until spring 2023, then I don't think we'll get the developer announcement until uh, like September or October, the way they did with the Apple Watch. Mm. Lepkowski's complaint is that you that AR works on the iPhone, but you have to download an app for it. You have to get the IKEA app or the something app. He says every click you make consumers go through, you lose fifty percent of your audience. Yeah, he wants it. He wants WebXR. He wants that standard, which is was developed by Google, Meta, Samsung, Mozilla, and Magic Leap, but is yet to be supported on iPhone. Mm. Yeah, they support it. They just don't support the same framework that everyone else is using, which makes it effective. Like you can go to apple.com, press a button, the UDZ file opens yeah. up and you can run yeah. around with it. Yeah, that's Mac right. They desktop. do that all the time yeah. with their invitations, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and Google is Google is doing uh, as you say, uh, AR through the web, or at least excuse me, three D through the web, where now so many search results will result in, hey, do you want to if if you do for, for your book report on the on the on the uh, on the mountain lion, hey, do you want to see? Not only do you want to hear what a mountain lion sounds like, we'd like a mountain lion on your desktop that you can then play with and and turn around three sixty degrees. I think I think it is a sign that even Apple and Google are kind of struggling to sell for the moment the public on what AR is going to do for them until until they give them the whole burrito 
where, hey, here's something that you would want to wear on your face for hours at a time that will not block you off from reality. It will simply enhance reality the same way that earbuds will enhance your reality by replacing all the street fights that you're hearing outside your door with uh, with great music and audiobooks. Until they find that moment, <laughs> so, it's going to be hard to even sell like these $500 headsets that uh, Oculus is having. There's also, there's also this thing where Apple is philosophically right but pragmatically wrong. And what I mean by that is there was this big discussion at Apple when the iPhone was coming out, what, what it should run, like AppKit or WebKit or something new. And Don Melton, who ran WebKit at the time, said it shouldn't be WebKit because like, as much as I'm the web guy, <clears throat> native performance is always going to be better. Web performance is always going to improve, but you'll always be able to do more with native and you have a native platform. And that has continued over the years. Like the Palm, you know, it took 20 seconds to open the Palm Calendar app back in the day. And it just wasn't acceptable to Apple at the time. And even now, web apps can do phenomenal things, but native is still faster. And Apple has two massive native platforms. So from their point of view, just running all this stuff natively, especially with a headset about to come out, makes so much sense. But so few other companies have native platforms that for them, the web is a pragmatic solution. It, it really is code once run everywhere. It's the Java, it's the Air, it's the, it's the Electron app. And Apple just, they can't get over that. And the, the WebKit team is doing way better. They've, they've announced all this experimental stuff. They're going to start supporting way more technologies in, in those streams. And I'm sure they're going to add this to the list. Well, I'm not sure, but you know, hopefully they'll add this to the list. But it, it is that divide between we have this hugely successful native platform. Why are you all screwing around with the web? And they're like, because we don't, we don't have your platform, sir, ma'am. Right. This will be it's, something it's to watch not. at WWDC. Apparently, there is some WebXR code in WebKit. Um, Apple apparently, you know, is a member of the you know W3C consortium, the immersive web group. Uh, so they, you know, they participate. But according to Yanko's uh, article, um, Apple promoted this new HTML element to display 3D content in browsers. They pushed it, but it's just a narrow part of a, the spec. And people are saying, well, why not just implement the whole spec? Why is Apple locking it out of the iPhone? So this would be something to watch uh, next month, uh, what Apple yeah. says about and Sometimes it's security. Yeah. Like they were slow with WebGL, but their implementation was the most secure of all the implementations yeah. and everybody else caught up. Like they just weren't first, but they were best and then everyone else became just as good. Uh, the article concludes, whether by choice or under pressure, if Apple does change its heart on supporting WebXR, industry insiders predict a massive shift for the entire industry with a new wave of innovation even before consumer-grade AR glasses are market-ready. And maybe that's why Apple's dragging its feet. Maybe it, it doesn't want to undermine its own. Yeah. It would really be a new dawn for AR. You'd see a lot of investment going in this area. Uh, so watch. Yeah, I... It, it's it, either Apple says no, we're going to do something proprietary, bad, <laughs> but uh, you know that's kind of <laughs> Apple's position with progressive web apps as well. They just really don't want those on the Apple uh, platform. They don't want them in WebKit, or they're holding on until they have something really secure, okay, and just right for maybe a, some hardware. But uh, it could this even is, be more self-serving. Like they might wait until they've announced, and because native is the only option, everything will look so silky smooth and fantastic. Yeah. Nobody will be able to load up a web page to show right. it on a web page. Oh, sure, you can have it as now. Else. Yeah, you can have it yeah. now. And then, yeah. and then the next year they'll announce the web stuff when everyone's already gaga over how well right. the that you know. <laughs> That it's a you know it's a. I mean that was the the business. HomePod the original HomePod didn't have Bluetooth and my understanding is because they thought that a bunch of us lazy reviewers wouldn't even try AirPlay we would just load up Bluetooth and it would sound exactly the same as everybody else's speakers mm. and would not justify the price tag and so they left it off and forced us to use AirPlay and say oh it sounds really good but I kind of understand that actually I try to use AirPlay whenever possible it does yeah. sound better right because it's got more yeah. bandwidth than Bluetooth all right let's take a little break when we come back. Will Apple employees come back to work? <laughs> there is a, uh, a bit of a um, revolt going on. Before we do that, though, I want to talk about uh, earbuds. Everybody says when you get earbuds, very important if you want good bass response to get a good fit. But they give you five tips, and you're trying the tips, and you're putting them in, and then they fall out when you shake your head, and you don't know, do I have the best seal I was so excited when Ultimate Ears, which makes the best in-ear headphones, in-ear monitors used by musicians all over the world, announced Ultimate Ear Fits. And that's what I've got in my hand right now. These are true wireless headphones that 
are custom fitted to your ear. But you don't have to go to an audiologist to do this. When I when I got my in-ear monitors, I went to an audiologist. He fills up your ear with silicone with a little string on it. You sit. You have to have popsicle sticks in your mouth to keep your mouth open while it sets. Five minutes later, he pulls it out with a giant suction sound. And now they have a mold, which you then send to, to a company to make in-ear monitors with. But, you know... That's what U2's Bono does. That's what all the musicians do. They have custom fit. And I'll tell you, with custom fit, not only are they uh, com more comfortable, no one else can wear them. And the sound is great because they seal your ear. I thought that was impossible without an audiologist's involvement. This is an amazing technology. The, you get a guaranteed fit in 60 seconds. Here, I've got the ultimate ears. When you first get the box, they're sealed away from oxygen. You put the UE Fits app on your phone, unseal them so that you know air can hit them. You're going to put them in your ear and they use this groundbreaking light form technology to mold to the unique contours of your ear. And it does it in about a minute. Watch, I'm going to do it. So no, now it's I'm going to put them in my ear. <laughs> it turns the light turns blue. It warms up. You can feel it warming up. And by the way, I, from long experience, did keep my mouth half open because apparently that changes the fit. Now, yeah, once you got them, it fits so perfectly. They sound so great and they are so comfortable. It's all I wear now is my UE Fits with eight hours of continuous playback on a single charge, 20 hours with a charging case. A charging case is beautiful. This is built on industry-leading expertise after years working with pro musicians and hi-fi enthusiasts, 25 years. Engineered to provide a full, warm sound with a tight, punchy low end. It's exactly how I want it to sound, but you can also use the app to set custom EQ presets. In fact, uh, you know, for my older ears, I actually model, modeled it a little bit better to fit my hearing. They let you do that too. You can play and pause music. You can answer calls with, yes, it's got a microphone with built-in controls. Voice assistant, volume adjustment, and more. Works with iPhones, great. Works with any phone, any Bluetooth. And by the way, if you try Fits and you don't love them as much as I do, don't worry. UE offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. Ultimate ears, UE Fits. Plus, you'll get free shipping, free returns, and a one-year warranty. This is the kind of comfort you can leave in all day, and it sounds so good because it seals properly. And yes, no one else can use my UE Fits. <laughs> use the promo code MacBreak at ue.com slash fits to get your pair of UE Fits. Let them know you saw it here. MacBreak is the promo code ue.com slash fits. I think you'll be very pleasantly surprised by the price, too. Yeah, it's it's really, really good. UE.com slash fits. Uh, the best sounding, the best fitting, the most comfortable earbuds you've ever used. UE.com slash fits. Promo code is MacBreak. Please use that. Please use that. I should I should try that. The re the reason why I wear headphones is because my I find that my ear my earbud stamina is like forty two and a half. Yeah, they minutes. hurt after a while. And yeah. so for after two for two anything that's over two hours, I'll be wear over the over the head uh, ear up. So I you know I should I, I'm going to check. Thank you very much, I, and I will use that offer code. Well, we could probably arrange for something for you, Andy. Let me <laughs> let me ask the boss. Um, I'm going to get you get you a pair because I I'd love for you to try these. K Woods in our chat room says he saw the ad. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, ordered them. He says, yep, got them in less than a week. Most comfortable headphones ever. So Thanks. Really good. Burke, get a pair for Andy, will you? <laughs> Burke doesn't. He has no. He says, fine. <laughs> sure. Well, yeah, right. Well, okay, yeah, yeah. Yes, Leo. <laughs> so uh, we have, we talked about this last week. A lot of Apple's uh, return to work phase-in has begun. Uh, I think in a week or two, you're going to have to, as an Apple employee, spend at least three days on the Apple campus or an Apple office, um, up from two, up from one, up from none. Lots of people really uh, like the work from home thing. And I'll, I think a considerable number of um, uh, Apple employees have signed a petition. Somebody said as many as half 
saying, you're, you're not listening. We don't want to come back. I know Steve thought it'd be great. We could all talk to each other. Except that, by the way, at Apple, you can't because no one's allowed to talk to anybody else about what they're working on. <laughs> Uh, so to be clear, these are the people who work with bits. The people who've worked with Adams have been back for like yeah. a year and a half already. The hardware folks. Yeah. This includes retail as well, right? But I think you couldn't really work from home in retail. Retail opened and closed. <laughs> Apple was really good at actually opening and closing and staging yeah. things up, but you had to have the retail. So these are, these are programmers, essentially. Coders, uh, designers, right. that kind of thing. Marketing. Yeah. Marketing. PR. Yeah. Marketing. Uh, services. Uh, Anyone who works with bits. Already a high-profile departure. Ian Goodfellow, who's Apple's director of machine learning, sent in a note to his staff, according to Zoe Schiffer, said, quote, I believe strongly that more flexibility would have been the best policy for my team. Um, not exactly the same thing as saying I'm quitting because of it, but he's, he's also... Yeah been there exactly the right amount of he time. He followed up by saying it was vesting. high on it. It wasn't the only thing yeah, on his list, a, but I think it was yeah. the highest thing on his list. Yeah. 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 That's that's a, that's a, that's a good point, Leo. Like I, I wonder I wonder if he felt that he would if he would have felt that way as a regular like salaried employee that, you know, if I uh, who who doesn't have like gee I, this is this is around the time where I could start to think about hey I can take all the money that all, all the stock money that I was uh, being given to be wooed away from Google and now I can take it and go someplace else yeah exactly but there's there's also but there, there's also uh, I don't know if this is the situation at Apple but I've been hearing about uh, companies that uh, large companies uh, in the Bay Area that have like th th part of the tax breaks they got when they bought property or where they built like, in that area was contingent upon them having a certain number of employees on that campus and that for, for those few companies that they will actually lose those tax benefits if they were to go to exactly the sort of work from work from home uh, split job that uh, that employees really want so possibly part of this could be out of apple's hands where it would just cost them too much money to let the, most of their people uh, go from work from home that's interesting there has always been the thesis uh the theory uh, as to why companies want their employees to come back to work because they have leased and rented and bought huge amounts of uh, office space and damn it we're going to fill it <laughs> you know our offices have been uh mostly empty for two years we invited people to come back a lot of people felt like they really didn't want to we weren't you know adamant about it a lot of our employees can work from home you know obviously some people can't studio engineers can't um and then you know this new ba well, first it was BA2, now it's BA, what is it, 2, 12, 22 or something? Yeah. There's a new the, one. The 20%, 25% spike, or the 33% spike, then the 25% spike, and yeah. enough of these already. We've already had, uh, for the first time ever, because I was really proud, for, we went two years, nobody, uh, none of our employees got it, and now people are getting it. And yeah, uh, everyone's getting it. Yeah, we're sending people home, we got to wear a mask in the studio again. So there is, you know, there's a couple of reasons you might not want coming back to work. One for, you know, purely, you know, for health reasons. But I think we've also learned that we can get the job done, maybe even better yeah. at home. If I'm a coder, I would rather work at home on my system yeah. without better having employees arguable, you like, know, peek over the partition saying, what you're working on? And without Apple meetings. Apple had like record years, but they also had so many people pull purchases forward because they needed new devices. They needed new things during work from home for themselves. So like people who said that Apple was way more successful during the shutdown and lockdown and work from home, that's a huge distortion. You have to remove like everybody who suddenly needed a Mac or needed an iPad or wanted to upgrade early uh, from that list. And I think it's inarguable that the this the, like the iOS and, and Mac OS were not feature complete uh, over the last two years, <laughs> and a lot of that is also a distortion because people were dealing with so much. Like they right. were they were not used to working from home. They had no childcare. Maybe at first they had the pressure of like six family members, all of those things. So I would throw out the negatives and throw out the positives and say like we really don't know what it would be like for a company like Apple. But you do have these. I, I did a whole video on this. I'm not going to go over the whole thing, but I, I put up a long video on this this morning. But you have like the Apple boomers who really believe in this culture that you have to be there, that it works together, that they're going to enculturate you by dealing with everybody else on the team. And then you have like the Apple Zoomers who just think that they are relics and fossils and have no idea how like modern things should work. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's a really big culture clash. And unfortunately, it doesn't seem like Apple is paying as much attention to managing it as they are managing the supply chain. They're like legit 9,000 IQ geniuses at getting products out during the <laughs> pandemic. But all of this stuff keeps bubbling up over and over again. And it doesn't seem like they have a handle on it so and what is, so one of the things we were talking about we had alex kantrowitz and brianna Wu on on sunday on twit great show and one of the things alex thought was a little weird was 
uh, Apple's famous secrecy prevents employees from talking across departments to other employees. So some of the benefits that Apple's talking about and other companies talk about of this kind of mixing of ideas isn't going to happen at Apple anyway. Oh, no, it's 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 engineered that way. Like in Apple Park, they, like they have those rings, but you are locked into your like vertical slice of that ring and it's adjacent teams that are that are locked together. So like you got to go out of your way to see anybody who's not already disclosed on what you're working on. Is it Unfortunately, apocryphal? does not solve for that problem. Steve Jobs uh, reportedly when the Apple ring was going to be built, said, we only want one bathroom per floor so everybody can talk to each other. <laughs> Is that apocryphal? A big I trough. believe so. <laughs> like Fenway, like, go, just like Fenway Park. You, you go up and down, trough, not around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, no, but like, like you, like you go, you don't go around at Apple Park. You go up and down. Like that's my, that's my understanding. Oh, interesting. So you can't go around the ring. You can only. Uh, I mean, it depends on your card, I'm guessing. But like, you'll hit those invisible doors at some. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'd love to go in there once. They'll, of course, I will never. But uh, I would love to just see it. It'd be very cool. I saw it on the early yeah. years. Did you? Yeah, it, like when it was first opening, they took some of us in for for different stuff. And oh, was, you got to go inside. It was beautiful. It was way like it, it complete. It was like night and day to compare to Infinite Loop because Infinite Loop already had like a, a huge overcrowding problem by then, and this was just very early. Like I don't think the whole the whole company certainly hadn't moved in yet, so it was very sterile and serene and fresh and clean. Well, yes, yeah, all offices are until the humans arrive. Until the humans <laughs> arrive. <laughs> Um, somebody until till the until the until the Apple gangs each, each the individual Apple gangs claims their turf. Yeah, yeah. Um, somebody said that there is a drone footage of Apple of people returning. Is that true? Somebody in the chat room said that. There was so much on Twitter about people having to commute again. And I think like a lot of us who aren't in the Bay Area don't understand like how long it takes to go even just yeah. a few miles in rush hour. And that, that's real lost time. That's lost time. That's bad for the like it's bad for nature because they're burning all these fossil fuels. And it's it's a huge cut into their day. And a lot of them have a lot of people in, in, in that area have like they don't need money anymore. They're, they're there because they want to dent universes and they were working from beaches and ski slopes for the last yeah. two years. Or they're, know, and, or, or, they're, or they're seeing their kids and their pets a lot more often than they used to. Or they or they could take exactly an hour and a half off for a dental appointment instead of having to t take an entire personal day off for a dental appointment. Here's this, like yeah. this, is, this, is, this, is the, this is the flip of labor Party in life. 2022 that people are asking, gee, why are we doing these procedures? Are we, and the, the wrong answer is because we've already done, always done it this way. Give us a reason why I can't work from from home right. two or three days out of the week here's a one drone shot of uh people in the meal area oh you see all the picnic tables and line a line to get into the yeah. cafeteria <laughs> so um by may 23rd you'll have to spend three days a week uh Waiting in line for lunch instead of... All Tim asked Johnny for was a corner office. All he said is, we're making a new headquarters, just give <laughs> just me a corner one office. Corner, and then me. he showed up, and he's, that, that's the real falling out right there. <laughs> Does Trip Mickle cover that in the book, I wonder? No. No. The Guggenheim doesn't have any corners, and it's an art museum. You think? Are you better than the Guggenheim <laughs> Art Museum? Fast Company story, how Apple overcame its culture of secrecy to create AirPods Pro. Uh, a former HR business partner, uh, Chris Deaver, wrote this. He joined Apple in 2015. Uh, he actually talks about the, the, the dark sides of secrecy, hoarding of critical information, pushing personal agendas, infighting. As a new HR business partner, I was often pulled into these escalations and was usually whinging about the team is not sharing <laughs> dad, dad. The, i remember like when news when the apple news was announced at the same time they announced a news aggregation feature in safari and they didn't work together and everyone's like why why not do that and it's because the two people had no idea what they were working on they were both black yeah. operations Absolutely. Secrecy was getting in the way, Diva writes, and what we'd seen with the development of the AirPods was an example of what exactly would happen when we hadn't solved for it. Teams were innovating for months in silos only to finally converge in the 11th hour before lunch, launch or lunch, ending up in five or six hour long daily meetings, creating tremendous friction and burnout. People were frustrated. They wanted to leave or, quote, never work with that one person again. Customers don't know these behind-the-scenes struggles of giving birth to the AirPods, just like most engineers who developed the AirPods didn't know the AirPods would be such an explosively successful, meme-worthy product. 
Or do you remember the HomePod where like the HomePod was announced and it was delayed and it was supposed to run AirPlay, but it turned out AirPlay was like a weekend project and was never meant to scale like this. Oh, so you had to go and rewrite AirPlay. And then they had to realize that, oh, Core Audio has so much technical debt. We got to fix, you know, 20 years, 10 years of Mac problems now as well, just to get this to work. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's very sad. That's very sad to hear because one of the hallmarks of Apple as a, as a business is for me has been how little infighting that they've had compared to most other companies that I know about and compared to the Apple of old. I mean, the 1997 Apple, there were people who were actively trying to undermine each other's to get access to their resources and their and their, uh, and their their human power. Uh, and it seemed as though Apple had kind of beat that. But the secrecy uh, of not being able, not left hand, not knowing what the right hand is doing, that's why bad products happen. That's why you wind up with extremely brilliant, elegant industrial design and technological features that the operating system is not really support, not, is not really, has not really been built in order to take advantage of. Uh, he says that they were inspired uh, by Ed Catmull, uh, his book, Creative Creativity Incorporated, and the notion of uh, the brain trust at Pixar, yeah. a collective team committed to egos off the table, building blocks on the table. This inspiration led to a brain trust for the development of AirPods, deeper collaboration, a culture shift. So Apple does that, but at the executive level, like they, they are uh, very good at having their weekly Monday meetings and then having their feature meetings where the SVPs get together and they figure everything out. But then it's it's given off to the individual teams and, and, and they're like, kept I in the article about this 10 years ago. Yeah. Like, why doesn't Find My work with Sirius? Well, you Siri and Find My weren't disclosed on each other's process. Yeah. That comes from, does it, uh, it seems that it comes from a lack of trust. Yeah, I mean, that, of, well, Steve of, had to read people in individually. Remember in the in the early iPhone days, yeah, like, yeah. and when Steve wasn't there, they couldn't read people in, and they had to go back and forth from the whiteboard to this unsecure room to tell them what they had just drawn on the whiteboard. Yeah. Also, also, there's there, people make fun of management as being, you know, Michael Scotts. But the thing is, brilliant management is all about traffic management, of being the person who is aware of these people are about are about to encringe into each other's lanes. They should be driving together, or they should be aware of what's what's going on between each other. So there's no, it's it's one it's one of the worst ways to step on a rake possible, and it's one of the hardest problems to solve, I think, in in management. Uh, so uh, they apparently tried this brain trust when developing the camera for the iPhone phone, and then uh, tried to apply the same approach to the next iteration of AirPods. Regular cross-staff sessions, transparency, and shared voice. What happened next was amazing. Again, this is Diva writing. As teams converged with leaders, becoming more open, connected, and driving higher quality collaboration than ever before, we spent time coaching, collaborating, and influencing key leaders and engineers driving the next frontier of AirPods. What emerged was a brain trust with regular sessions, openness, and connection. Uh, and he says that was what brought to life the insanely great noise-canceling AirPods Pro. So this is really an article in Fast Company for other, I think, intended for other business leaders, um, saying, you know, there's, a, there's possible to do this better. This is uh, yeah. Chris Deaver writing, former HR. That's, 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 that's not even necessarily dysfunction inside Apple. People, again, we, we, we are so attached to the personalities that we know about and the history and the culture, we forget that it is, as I keep saying, a $2 trillion company. And that means that they're, they're so big that there are some things that they are not going to be very good at in terms of management, in terms of workflow, in terms of all these other things, that it, they, they have the same problems as everybody else. It's not, because the, it's not because the company's falling apart. It's because it's a huge freaking company. The Shanghai it's also a really weird company because they like Apple uniquely amongst the giant tech companies almost died like they were all close to bankruptcy and a lot of the executives there still think that they're beatable like they know what it's like to lose and so they have, some of those departments have historically been so incredibly stingy that it's like one person or one engineer who's in charge of an entirely important feature for a device like like famously Ken Kashinda made the iPhone keyboard at Microsoft that would be 200 people working on the keyboard for a mobile device and it creates like I think like in some companies there's way too many cooks in the kitchen but at Apple there's historically been way too few and that creates whole different set of problematic you know the, challenges the, 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 com the, the company that grew up during the during the depression and has to use every tea yes. bag nine times yeah <laughs> uh shanghai's covid lockdown in its sixth week is absolutely affecting uh apple and it is not getting uh, any easier this article in wall street journal for a couple of days ago uh the covid lockdown gets tougher if one person tests positive the whole building yeah. isolates 
Um, Quanta, which is uh, where Apple yeah. makes its laptops, is one of the companies shut down. Um, tighter restrictions since the beginning of April. And uh, there's a video that was shared uh, on Twitter and YouTube of workers rushing through the barriers trying to trying to get out. Uh, this is from uh, May 6th. Um, trying to escape the lockdown, and uh, there's a lot of suffering going on. It's it's bad yeah. news. It's really uh, it's really bad news. Um, so yeah, we could talk about the supply chain shortages and how long it's going to take you to get a well, uh, and Mac the Studio. Zero but spread is it's not it's untenable. Like, talk about yeah, it's not, yeah, it's, yeah. Un, it's unattainable. It, it's unattainable, and it and it's untenable, and it's yeah, uh, a great human uh, tragedy. It's going to cause so much pain just yeah. sticking to it. Yeah, yeah, I'm 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 fully convinced of that. Although you know, we're still making people get vaccinated and wear their masks. There's stuff you can do without locking the you know sealing people we still into have buildings. A mask mandate at yeah. least for five more days. Yeah. Well. Yeah, but th but then again, we didn't have almost our, we we weren't the epicenter of the True. epidemic, yeah. and True. so the, the 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 early days of the epidemic in China were pretty horrific, uh, and this is this was I I like to think that the swift response that other countries had was seeing exactly how badly it hit certain cities in China with a medical system that was unprepared for a disease that nobody knew anything about. So I I, I, I can understand academically I can understand the depth and the intensity of the government's response, but yeah they're not they they have it seems as though they have been enforcing rules that they are not the government is not equipped to support the citizens and saying well yes we will lock you down but we will take care of you we'll make sure that you are well supplied you are well equipped that your health is well taken care of that we are not going to do more damage than we absolutely have to but when you're really tearing families apart and saying here's here's a bag of groceries that may or may not work. Work for you. Good luck. If you need medical care, good luck. It's not good. Graham Tate is an Australian-based photographer traveling uh, in the Flinders Ranges with $7,000 worth of gear. It was stolen from his car in the parking lot of his hotel. Fortunately, he had air tags attached <laughs> to the items. He opened the Find My app, found the location of his stolen gear. Now, I'm could insist that he did not go then to that location, and you shouldn't either. He <laughs> called the police no. and was fortunate that, in this case, the police responded instead of saying, yeah, right, uh, and was able to recover everything, including his wallet, his laptop, his camera, and GoPro. The items were found in a room in the same hotel. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah, yeah. Put, it's, it's nice. To, it's it's nice to click on that story, uh, story with that headline, and not have a. You're, I, I was sort of tensing myself to for like paragraph nine to say he actually didn't own the AirPod. The AirPod was slipped into the bag by another thief who intended to rob him <laughs> later on. <laughs> uh, all right. Anything else that we uh, we should there talk was this about? Weird story from Linus Tech Tips. I don't know if you saw it, but he he got swindled out of ninety thousand dollars <gasps> because somebody hacked his contractor while he was busy redoing his house. And they, they, they jumped onto an existing thread saying that if, well, if you give us a bank draft for $90,000, we'll cut this much money off of the price. And because it was part of the ongoing conversation, they thought it was legitimate, sent the check off. A couple oh. days later, their contractor said they were hacked. He's like, well, why didn't you tell me that earlier? And then spent like a, a, a few days trying to get the RCMP, which is like the Canadian FBI, to help. And they were not helpful. But a, a, a listener, a viewer, managed to get the, the bank in Toronto involved. And then the okay. Toronto RCMP seemed to get involved. But it's just like the, the amount of the, the quality of social engineering attacks is getting so high now that like there's... Believe nothing. got to be so careful. Send no yes. money. <laughs> Always use a second <laughs> channel to authenticate the first channel of the Oh my God! I'm, I'm, Terrifying. I'm paying yeah. my bills by traveler's checks from now on. It's just <laughs> so bad. Can Carrier you get, pigeons. Can, can you Andy. still get traveler's checks? <laughs> that would be that would be that would be a good challenge. That <laughs> that, 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 that should be for the for the, for the next. I don't know if Linus Tech Tips is, is doing their uh, uh, that they they used Pay to do these challenges where with traveler's yeah, checks. Exactly. Here, buy, buy build build a thousand. You have a you have a budget of a thousand dollars. You have to pay with tra traveler's checks. There are younger people listening, Andy, who do not know what traveler's checks are i believe they don't even know who colin alden is no nope. god don't leave home without it not even through his movie work no <laughs> in the old days kids before atms if you went to a foreign land you would buy before you went you would buy something called traveler's checks often from american yeah, express 
you would sign the front, but not the back. Then when you arrived in a foreign land, you would go to an American Express office and you would sign the back in front of the teller and they would give you the dollar value of the traveler's checks in the local currency. Lo and behold, you also used to be able to get mail at the American Express offices. Yeah. That's how old I am. <laughs> I'm no that that I, well, the, I I'm so lucky I, I I'm just young enough that like the first time like when I was 20 years old I traveled on business like I had I had to look for an ATM that supported my network back in Boston but I was yeah. able to simply like take out money from there and my my dad who traveled a lot because he was a he was an engineer for like electrical power companies for part of his career it's like all the infrastructure he had taught me about like oh since my I was God, like seven yes. years old was like all dad all I, all I got to do is like this ATMs piece of plastic changed every thing yep. unbelievable of course you have to pay a huge exchange rate nine dollars in transaction fees yeah. as well but yeah. <laughs> uh you the have to pay for changed. transaction for travelers checks they still offer them by the way um c-h-e-q-u-e-s for more than a century our travelers right checks have helped travelers protect their money <laughs> who, who did nelly Bly rely on <laughs> went around the world in 80 days why it was lloyd's bank and american express uh wow one, one thing we didn't mention and it's, it's not worth the whole thing but there's a lovely scene apple put up a uh, may the fourth be with you video with skywalker audio and they have a, a lovely scene of their server room just replete with mac pros oh yes this this was actually pretty cool let me let me let me find that I mean, there's nothing that R2D2 can't make adorable, even when it's just his sound. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, can I? You think I could play it? It's on YouTube. I feel like it's on YouTube. I should be able to play it, right? Yeah. Let me just play it without going full if you screen. You close your eyes and just listen to the sounds. Could you identify the movie and where we are in the movie? Everything is just so. I think so. Iconic. This is the one you're talking about, right? Yeah, as long as we critique it, it's fair use, Leo. Yeah, we're just critiquing that, it. You're like, oh, that's Star Wars. Yeah. That's totally Star Wars. So, uh, what's he using? Oh, sharp, uh, that video is, is he using a? Um, that is a stormtrooper. I guess they couldn't afford a color or camera. Stuff. They're not Apple displays, so I think that's why they keep the oh, logos really. Oh, blurry, like they're not Apple Dell. displays. Oh, no, there's a Mac. There are MacBooks and there are Mac Pros around. And are they using Logic or? Uh, and the, the Pro Tools actually say the name Pro Tools in the. It says Pro Tools, which means yeah. you can't use uh, Mac OS Monterey. You can't even use Catalina. Oh, I love how much fun they're having. Nice. May the 4th. Oh, there's a film. Wait a minute. This is yeah. This yeah, was a the tease. Trailer. That was still the next, the, yeah, the oh, next okay. trailer came out. Oh, man. There are some color parts, but again, I think they're going out of their way to not show the not Apple stuff. It's hysterical. Yeah. Well, good. I just played yeah. the tease. You can't fault yeah. me for that. Exactly. You're, 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 you're helping drive traffic. You're being a good so The way it works is that like, it's all robots. Like if they sense it, the content ID system will flag it. And then you just got to oh, say, know, no, I dispute worst. this. And they will never, they will never, well, not never, but like unless you're egregiously violating it, they can't really do anything. Well, they can demonetize. They, I mean, there's all sorts of stuff they can do. And then you have to fight it. Yeah. yeah. It's, well, it's just like you just say, no, it's wrong. And then like usually within a couple of days or like it's the same day, a lot of times it's cleaned up. Oh, uh, like yeah. Not been our experience. Go. We'll say, no, it's wrong. No, it's and then <laughs> they'll say, come, come get us, big boy. It's we not have, a good system. We can system. have a whole conversation about this. It's later. not a good system. No. Uh, no. All right. I guess we could talk about the fact that Apple better and Google and everyone else better mind their P's and Q's because... The UK antitrust body will be able to fine Apple and Google 5% of their global revenue every day. Yeah. That means in three weeks, you make no money. Revenue? Jeez. Jeez. Uh, yeah, I find it odd that you can sue based that you can find based on global revenue. That doesn't that seems like an overreach. Of, yeah. Of, of, well, that's 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 the sort of Damocles that, that they need to have like the poison pill to make sure that people companies like Apple and, and Facebook and Google aren't just going to simply wait stuff out. Uh, this and this, this shows what this if they shows want the money, immense, Andy? Well, <laughs> like all these countries are going to say, we want money. We're going to just take it. Eh. 
They 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 want they want a solution so that they actually get what they want, and what they want isn't money. They want they want people to operate by the rules that the EU uh, and the individual local governments have actually created. They they know they know that once they start once they start uh, asking for like two hundred billion dollars from a company, <laughs> they they you know they they know that at that at that point that's when you are no longer prime minister and the new prime minister is being well backed, and they they're for, they used to run the iPod division, you know. Oh. But the, but this just this just comes to show you that. Why you should, if you're interested in the subject, you need to absolutely follow what what the EU is deciding because uh, the EU EU's uh, uh, antitrust and privacy legislation is very much being written as a template for all governments everywhere, and so every yeah. government is looking at it. So if if the United States government ever seriously got its act together about antitrust and was able to really develop broad uh, broad uh, uh, across the aisle support for this sort of thing it would be something very very similar to what the eu uh, passed and is going to be enacted in 2023 not that i don't realize it's complicated and nuanced and there's a lot of stuff that needs to be worked out but john gruber had a fabulous a uh, noted design and security experts at the eu decide to remake apple pay article that i thought was typically <laughs> snarky in the gruber fashion but uh, i'm always i'm always wary because they the EU, I find, has really, really good concepts and really terrible implementations. And I've never seen one of their antitrust things work out the way that I, as a consumer, and I keep mentioning this, but like they effectively destroyed web rendering engines. I only have Chromium and, and WebKit now, effectively. I just wish that their their policies were, um, what's the right word? We're more in the spirit of competitiveness and not in mm. sort of the myopia that they always get dragged down into. Well, it's well, it's interesting. There was a finding. This isn't part of the uh, uh, of the 2023 Act, but there was a finding that they sort of attached to it after it was passed, saying that oh, by the way, the fact that the only web rendering engine that it's being allowed on iOS is Apple's web rendering engine, similar for for Google, uh, it, that's that's not going to fly either. You're going to have to allow uh, competing web rendering engines on your platforms. That's it's, I, I, I don't. I think there's going to be a lot of pain associated with these laws. The question is: Is it going to achieve much, much more than the pain that's going to be suffered? That's always the question. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of okay if, if, uh, if it's no longer as easy to do certain things, so long as it's solving really, really major problems. So long as I don't have to worry about. So long as I have more options. So long as I have more opportunities. I'm perfectly okay. I, I think that'll be okay for everybody. The old joke was that the Justice Department really only cared about lowest pricing. They didn't care about any sort of real yeah. competitiveness. If you could get a lower price, like if Amazon was willing to undercut people, that was fine as long as it was lower price. And the EU cared about competitiveness, but in an abstract where it was like a forced competitiveness that wasn't always in the best interest of the consumer. And I have this, this romantic notion of them looking at a market, getting the best people involved in it, like the brightest people who understand that market deeply and figure out laws that make it better for me as a customer. Because sometimes the lowest price isn't what I need or want. And sometimes Times, just having a bunch of companies do it isn't yeah. what I need or want. There's like there's a lot of different solutions across this, and I just like there's such a big and powerful thing. I wish they were they, they took the process yeah. more seriously. That that, that is actually what, what uh, Commissioner Khan's uh, what what a lot of his her dogma is about. That there part of part of her thesis isn't just that hey tech premiums are too big they need to be knocked down a peg, but part of it is that we need to start stop considering. Uh, making how much are people paying for for a pair of set of snow tires the only criteria for whether a monopoly exists they need to they need to ask what is what are cons what is the consumer experience like what is consumer options like is it is it giving them more power or is it being used to restrict their power which i think is a very 2022 attitude uh Internet explorer finally there's a, if there's a will there's a way now you could play fortnite on any device, speaking of which, for free, <laughs> speaking of which, uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming, no subscription required. You can play with touch or play with a controller. You can use Safari, right? Um, it won't work on my browser, Firefox. Tim Epic was so happy. Yeah, Fortnite is everywhere. You cannot escape it. <laughs> you can get your V-Bucks right on the web. Right there. All right, let's take a, a little time out and get your picks ready, if you would, boys and girls. But first, a word from our sponsor. And actually, I know John's been playing with it because he's been doing some wild transitions with our new TriCaster 2 Elite. That is the latest TriCaster that we are using, the most complete live production system on the planet. And John has been playing with all those new features, too. Every once in a while, 
strange things will happen. New Tech is an amazing company. When, back when I started Twit in 2005, I was looking for, a, actually it was when I started doing video, so maybe a couple of years later, we were looking for a way to switch video live, a way I could do it at the same time as I was doing a show. And they're just, it was a, a no-brainer. That's when we started using TriCaster. We have not stopped in more than 15 years. There you go. <laughs> the TriCaster 2 Elite is our current model. Pretty impressive. For instance, we've got that point tilt, pan tilt zoom camera over my head, which is connected with one wire, power over Ethernet. And NDI means that camera can feed our TriCaster uh, over the network uh, digital interface and get its power all from one cable. That's remarkable. Uh, it's an all-encompassing digital media solution to create content for the internet, mobile, television distribution. Uh, late last year, they released the updated version of the TriCaster 2 Elite. That's when we got the new one. Lots of new features. The much-loved Live Call Connect feature now supports Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, and FaceTime as inputs to any production. In addition, selectable audio and video returns now enables the TriCaster 2 Elite operators to view an audio return like any other output, allowing greater flexibility. They've got this new neural voice isolation tool to clean your audio. Using AI, the system can cancel or reduce background noise and automatically detect voices, maintaining all important production quality. Really widely used in churches and sporting events, television stations, the TriCaster 2 Elite is an entire production facility in a box. Increased power, increased flexibility, but simplicity. So have driven some of the exciting new capabilities with variable support. In macros, the system offers a dynamic and powerful tool that allows operators to nest macros, deliver complex productions more easily. Little pro tip, little secret. That's that's how I run my TriCaster in my other studio. It's all macros, baby. It'll all work. TriCaster 2 Elite now supports encoding of three channels, anything from HD to UHD, all at the same time which is fantastic, greater power and flexibility to productions. They've brought the live panel builder into the TriCaster, meaning users can create bespoke user interfaces and customize each preset within the user interface, making your distributed workflow simpler, more cohesive, and never, never compromising on quality. Quality and creativity have not been forgotten as operators now see the resolution and frame rate of every video source coming into their TriCaster to ensure they can always be confident of the quality of their sources. The NDI GenLock tool allows TriCaster 2 Elite users to match outputs to a common sync pulse. Alex Lindsay will tell you how important that is so you know exactly when to send a frame of video for pinpoint accuracy. It's perfect for remote workflows. You can now send alpha channel through one of the mix outs, bringing post-production closer to live. Users can use the keying on TriCaster to feed graphics or real-time 3D creation tools. Since its arrival in 2020, the TriCaster 2 Elite has offered an incredibly powerful live production system. The very latest updates, which we have now, I'm so happy to say, put even more power in the hands of storytellers everywhere. TriCaster 2 Elite. It's transformative. It's setting new standards. And you know what? It's better than broadcast. It is. It really is. The TriCaster 1 Pro is an evolution in modern storytelling for producers, content creators, and publishers with future-ready capabilities. Why don't we have one of those, John? Let's get one of those. It's a streamlined live video production system with live call connect support for 4K, UHD switching, live streaming, recording, and data driven. We can have 4K, but just not for my picture, okay? Explore the latest in the TriCaster family. Visit go.newtech.com slash twit dash TV, where you'll find an easy to use interactive guide that offers advice on which TriCaster is right for you. That's go dot n e w t e k newtech dot com slash twit dash tv don't forget the dash <laughs> i just love the new tech stuff and now i want a tricaster one pro did we get did they give us the option did they say you can have the tricaster two elite ah this is brand new this new one this just came out all right okay get it let's get on the horn I always want the latest. Visit go.newtech.com slash twit dash TV. Now, time for the picks of the week. Andy and Nako can start us off. Andrew? 
Uh, this is a really esoteric but interesting app I came across recently. Uh, it's called Blur Screen, and all it does is it will blur sections of your screen on command, so that if you're doing like a live stream and you're doing hey oh. and this, or or if yeah. you're even recording a video, uh, recording a screen capture of hey and here's what it's like, here's how to log into the system, and this is the point which you don't want people to see your username or your password. Uh, instead of like recording it to video and then using post production, you can just simply activate this. Uh, this plugin, uh, draw a rectangle on the screen and d select how blurry it's going to be. And then like that section of the screen is just blurred out. It's also nice because you can activate it by hotkey. So again, if you're pre-recording, you can you know that this is the this is the area of the screen that I will want to have blurred out when I demonstrate this part of it. So you can just blah 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 blah, click this, do this, and then hit Command B, and now suddenly that part is blurred out while you're typing in your thing, and then you go to the next part and you can unblur it. It's it seems to do a very very simple thing, such a simple thing that I was surprised that I I was like there must be something else like this uh, out there somewhere, and there kind of really isn't. There are a lot of individual apps for uh, graphic designers that will make it very, very easy to, I'm going to drag this image onto this app and then I can black out parts of a user ID or whatever like this. This is this is the only one that I can come across that seems to be for live streamers. Uh, it'll work with Zoom. It'll work with uh, most screen sharing sort of apps uh, or if you're, or again, for screen capture, for, for, uh, for uh, uh, capturing uh, what you're doing on your screen while you're doing it. Uh, and it's not that expensive. It's 20 bucks, but you own it. It's not like 20 bucks, like... Uh, a year for for that and it, it it strikes me as something that if you don't need it you will never use it but there are people listening to what's the, give the url what give the url this is exactly the solution it'll, it'll if, if if most of your post processing is like now what now that i've gotten the video editor now i have to edit out all this stuff that i don't want people to see it's nice to be able to do this stuff live uh, or in camera so to speak uh, without having to deal with it later so i thought it, that seems to work pretty well now I can go 4K and just blur my face. Perfect solution. There you go. I just, if I didn't shave this morning, there you go. Just blur from like here down. <laughs> blur screen dot app. B L U R S C R E E N dot app. Renee Ritchie, pick of the week. So this just came out today, and I always like to keep these picks super fresh if I can, and it is the DJI Mini 3 Pro. Ooh. I have the Mini 2, and the reason that the Minis are so important is that a lot of jurisdictions have clamped down on drones, you know, as well they should have, and for over, I think it's 250 grams, you need to basically register it with your local flight authority. I think in some places you've got to take the equivalent of a pilot's license, uh, but they're highly, highly regulated with tons of areas that you just, like, people will tattle on you super fast. So this is like a 240 or something. It's like one gram, one ounce. I forget the measurement. <laughs> what, just right below the legal limit. So you can actually use this in a lot of areas. <clears throat> and this is, uh, well, a caveat. I think like, this is what Mike Elgin had when we were in Mexico. And it was great because you could just whip it out anywhere and yep. and get great footage because it's so light. It's yep. so little. There's still there's no fly zone still. Like for example, the app won't let you use it near an airport. So right. there are places where yeah. it's heavily restricted. And some some places are completely restricted just because of the government. But it lets you use it any place where it's not dangerous to use. And the big difference between this and the two is one, this has higher capacity batteries if you really need to use it longer. They are heavier though, so you will then have to go through the whole normal drone process <laughs> if you want to use those. But you can get like 30 minutes with just the built-in batteries here. This is I Justine's a video using the uh, Mini so 3 good. Pro. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you need to find something you need you need to find somebody in your life who looks at you the way Justine looks at the controller that she discovers. <laughs> so like she didn't think there was an included controller. She sees there's a controller with a screen. She lights up in a way that you you just got to find somebody Actually, in your life. Actually that's cool cuz in the past you've used an iPhone or an iPad, right? Yeah. Oh my god, there's a controller. Oh! And a touchscreen. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah, and, and the, thing, and the great, the great thing about the great thing about I Justine is that her reputation is such that you know that's a genuine like reaction. Yeah, she's not now faking it's supposed to, it. Now get get ready get ready to shoot the thumbnail producer because I'm going to be really big when I go. Oh my god! I it like it though batteries. that I don't have, that I that it has the controller uh, has yeah. its own thing built in. That's yeah, nice. so no one tries to FaceTime you or call you or message yeah, you while you're using it. Yeah. And also, this has four sensors, two on the top and two on the bottom for dodging. Like, uh, Good, because uh, I like, need so that. Like, <laughs> like the, Mavic, the Mini 2 didn't. So like if you were if you were flying at some place you that's shouldn't right. be flying to, it's really easy. I know this from personal experience, it would bounce off. Yeah. And that's not good for a yeah. drone. So this actually will avoid obstacles uh, for you, which makes it much more useful. And the camera pivots so that if you are doing, like, for example, if your son is doing the TikTok and he wants to zoom in on his cooking, you 
you, you don't have to crop anymore. You can just rotate the camera to portrait mode, film all your videos that way. So he flies into the window, right into the kitchen, sits down on the table just in time for the flambe, <laughs> whatever you need, uh, which is great because there are shorts and reels and TikToks and all those things right now. I may so have to get it, this. Uh, do you think I won't be able to crash really it? <laughs> no, 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 you'll, you'll crash it for sure. But there's a bonus pack you can get that has the extra batteries and extra propellers. So, oh, you know, okay. hopefully it'll, it'll resist a, at least a couple times. I'm thinking I'd like to bring this uh, with me to Alaska. It might be kind and of fun. Peter McKinnon had some footage. He filmed on a lake in Italy, and it is unbelievably good looking. It's a 48 megapixel sensor on the camera. Uh, so it shoots really, really crisp, beautiful looking video. Well, that's a big and sacrifice so small, in a lot of these little ones is you don't have a good camera. Yes. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. And well, you can do though. It's not like first person. Like some drones are first person, and you you actually feel like you're flying it. Um, but if you're if you're if you're a good enough video game player, you can do those shots where like you fly through the open door in the right. car. You know, so you can do some F really impressive. FPV stuff. is very hard to do. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's you know, it's kind of cool like if you get really yeah. good at it. But it's very very you got to really practice a lot. And this um, stuff is just gorgeous looking. Does this have the follow me thing? Because that's the other thing. Yeah, it looks like it does. Active it has track. tracking. Yes. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. So I I can get on the cruise and just say follow us. <laughs> as long as it's cruise legal. Like, I'm not taking any. I don't know I, if it's cruise legal. Not a legal. lawyer. I don't know <laughs> if it's cruise legal. Okay. But a lot of beaches are fine with it. You know, a lot of places, a lot of parks are fine with it, and uh, like a lot of car, like you, you, there's fantastic car shots that you can get. It's it's really nice. Wow, it's, I love it that it has obstacle sensing and all uh, all plans yeah. now. Okay. This, this this might be this might be finally the one that says, you know what? Maybe this wouldn't be a foolish purchase, Andy. <sighs> it's yeah, always we'll a watch foolish. Andy going to get his pizza. It's like, always from, a foolish <laughs> right purchase for me. Yeah. Right now, you have to reserve it. You can't buy it yet. Um, no. So I'll just have to fill in my address and. I think but I. But if have. you want it, like act fast, because what we've noticed about the last couple of years is that you can buy things right away. Or have a really long wait when you yeah. start to buy them later. Like they made a hundred, and uh, they're not going to make any yeah. more until twenty twenty five. Well, I don't know if you saw it, but like the MacBook was like I don't know seventy seventy odd days or something to get like yeah. a MacBook Pro yeah, and some of the other stuff. Crazy. Yeah. Oh wait a minute, it won't be available till August, so I can't take it on the cruise. Ooh, that's a relief. Oh. You can get a map. You can get a DJI Mini too. I mean, you just have to. No, 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 no. I I did order the uh, Snapchat selfie drone. I figured I can't screw oh, nice. that up. But there's nothing to steer with. If it's cruise, if it's if it's going to screw up, it's just going to have to screw itself up. <laughs> I figure Lindsay must have an ornithopter for his iPhone. He just oh, wouldn't that be cool with the flapping wings? A yeah. heli gyro. <laughs> Folks, gyro. we have come to the conclusion of this gripping, thrilling edition of Mac Break Weekly. The day the iPod died. Oh. Oh, bye, 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 Miss American tiny Eye. Thousand songs <laughs> in my pocket. Uh, Andy Anako, WGBH is calling. When will you respond? I am off this week, This week, but I'll be back next week. Until then, you can see everything that I've been done for the last <laughs> few years on WGBHnews.org. Uh, you can stream it wherever you want. They usually break out my own seg segments into their own actual link. Uh, I have a plug. You can watch my son... Salt Hank in the sandwich battle tonight on Access Hollywood. I know who wins, really? but I can't tell you. <laughs> this is his second appearance on Access Hollywood. I think he's becoming a celebrity. Uh, Mr. Soon, yeah, soon you'll be the, the father. You won't be like the star. I will be, be your the, son I already anymore. am. I know. His dad. Yeah, I'm the father. Yeah. You're Hank's dad. I'm Hank's dad. What's he gonna What's What's he gonna wear to the Met Gala next year? <laughs> you know. That's a good question. I'll have to ask him. I bet he's going. Matt Black Chef's hat. I bet he's going. Uh, Renee Ritchie, youtube.com slash Renee Ritchie. You said you just did a video uh, all yes. about this whole back to work thing. Uh, I'm looking at Apple's culture clash from retention through like whether people are happy with Apple Park, uh, people who have enough money they don't have to work anymore if they don't want to, people <laughs> want to spend time with their RSUs if they can, and then just what's, what's going to happen moving forward. So everything that's currently uh, a battle, I think, within Apple. Apple for their future doomed culture. finally. Is the name of the yep. is the name of the piece? <laughs> and then you're gonna have to watch it. You gotta have to watch it to find out what he's talking about. Like I said, about. I'm trying to do videos that you won't see on any other YouTube channel. And I like I'm, that. And I'm experimenting yeah. with not doing like B-roll. I'm trying to do the stuff that I can do. Good. Uh, it's very rewarding so far. Good. That's 
so great. Your your point of view is what I love about your videos. Exactly. And so to, to, you know, and you, we don't need to be we don't need the thirteenth hot take on yes. something that really there's only there's really nothing to say about it except for to inform people it's happened. It's like you have such a great point of view, and every time you have something to say about a topic, it always makes me not necessarily reconsider what I thought. That ooh, that is something I hadn't I, I hadn't seen it from that dis, that direction before. I'm going to reconsider a few things. Absolutely right. Well, I get to hone them all here with you guys on Mac Break, so you are my other I, exactly. I'm so, I, I'm, I'm so I'm so lucky that like I'm on, on NPR on Fridays because oftentimes like, I'll have written like that's that part of the segment like on like Monday night when the news hit, then like suddenly I have to actually talk about it with three very very smart people. Like oh. That is that is an excellent point. I, I guess <laughs> yeah. I, I guess I guess I hadn't thought about that before. And suddenly, Absolutely suddenly on insane. Friday, I'm a genius. Why do you think I started Twit all those years ago? It was to combine all the knowledge of all the friends I have, so that I could not be such an idiot. And uh, it hasn't worked well, I yet. Think the but goal someday. of like Mac Break is like if you listen to us in the morning, you will be the smartest person in the room and at lunchtime. That's, that's right. our only goal. That's our goal. <laughs> We do Mac Break Weekly every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. You can watch us do it live at live.twit.tv. There's actually live audio and video there. Watching live, chat live with us, either in our Club Twit Discord or on our wide open IRC at irc.twit.tv. Folks, if you've subscribed to Club Twit, seven bucks a month, you get ad-free shows. I get ad-free shows. You get ad-free shows. Plus, you get the Twit Plus feed which has some wonderful stuff in it, including the Untitled Linux show. And you get access to our Discord, which is gobs of fun all the time. So it's really a, a win all around. $7 a month, twit.tv slash club twit. Please help us out. Help a guy out. Help a fellow out. After the fact, on-demand versions of the show available. It is a Open the Pod Bay Doors, Hal Cast. Uh, you can get it from our website, twit.tv slash mbw. You can also get it wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube. There's a full YouTube channel dedicated to it as well. Audio and video of all the shows. Thank you so much for watching. And now I have to say it. It's time to get back to work because break time is over. See you next time. The world is changing rapidly, so rapidly, in fact, that it's hard to keep up. That's why Micah Sargent and I, Jason Howell, talk with the people making and breaking the tech news on Tech News Weekly every Thursday. They know these stories better than anyone, so why not get them to talk about it in their own words? Subscribe to Tech News Weekly, and you won't miss a beat every Thursday at twit.tv.